We are going live. And we're live. Yes. The only thing I thought of is if we were streaming at a really low bitrate or something. Maybe that would make it different. Maybe. We are we do still our bitrate is still too high. YouTube still complains and says, Oh, your bitrate is too high. I just find that weird. Given, yeah. You know. Big same. Uh, I mean, we are at an overkill bitrate, but it's kind of just because we can, and because YouTube has built-in transcoding, there's no point. There's no point in lowering your bitrate. So yes. Yeah, it's silly. So yes, hello everyone. A nice zoom and doff. Yes. Yep. Caradog is all about the doff these days, and it's glorious. We like it. Uh, how's everyone doing? How are we all doing? Too much cider already? Not yet. Um, but yeah, we've we've got it ready. I think. Yes, we have. Yes. It's menacingly on the back bench. Yes. So yes. All uh, right. Yes. Good. Hello, everyone. How are we all doing? Um, I missed something. Not yet. We've literally just started. Show off that glass work. Mm. You say you say about depth of field. That's a lot of depth of field. Yes. Caradog is showing me a picture of um, the stamen of a flower. And the depth of field is approximately two millimeters. The depth of field is all. Yes. <laughs> you could do some really weird sort of alien photography like that. Yeah. How odd. Hmm. We're not late this week. No, we're not late this week. I've had an absolutely manic morning and then it got round to like three o'clock. And instead of me going, right, what else do I need to do before we close up today? I was just like, I can't. It's three o'clock. Whatever there is that needs to be done, I'm out of time. Let's just set up the podcast. Um, and there wasn't a lot to do, really, because we're this is going to be... We're mostly talk showing, but uh, talk show and laptop. So, yes, I might ditch this as well. I don't really need this on. I thought it'd be cold. So, yeah, don't mind me. I'm just... It's a bit early to be stripping off. Oh, that was the other reason why I put this on, is because I'm wearing a dark jumper, so I'm now just going to disappear in the shop. Oh, wow. Yeah. That is... Yeah. I I had... I was going to put wow. on... Yeah, I was going to put on the light-coloured jumper that I was wearing last week for this exact reason. Um, however, I've, I've left it at home. I, I think I might... I'm going to put that back on just because it ruins the shop. So. I entirely misread what Mark said. Oh, he said, I see. for that you need a lens baby, Graham. I read that as you need a, le a lesbian Graham. And I was like, I don't know how that works. How does that help? Oh, that's why you were going, oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were going, oh, wow, at the fact of just I my body disappeared when I took off this uh, light jacket that I'm wearing. You could just take the jumper off and leave the jacket on, as Sai says. Could do. Well, fine, you've upset me. <laughs> fine, I will just reveal myself. This is the point where I go to take off the jumper and actually pull off all the layers at the same time and go all bare 17. chest. All 17. Yes. <laughs> I did that one. I was, in a, I was in a cafe and I went to take off my jumper. I went, and just the whole lot came off and I just went, oh no. <laughs> and put it all back on again in one smooth movement. <laughs> <laughs> It was amazing and awful in equal measure. There were children, there were, <laughs> there were screaming, there were explosions in the background. Mm. It was awful. It was awful. Mm. Uh, ben Lay, thank you very much for the five pounds. How's it going, man? Greatly appreciated. Graham is entirely la layers. There's nothing underneath. Yeah, basically that. When, you're, when you have the rake physique, as I do... You wear a lot of layers because otherwise you're just cold all the time. So yes, gave everyone a flash of my six pack. Yeah, I'm secretly ripped. Gyms hate me, and I have one easy secret. The rest of them aren't easy. <laughs> Become a YouTube member today to find out what my one secret is. Don't. There is no secret. Um, anyway, but do. But, don't. <laughs> but do. Hmm. Right. If you wore last week's jumper, there would be complaints that you'd not washed. <sighs> yeah. Right. Anyway. So, how is everyone? We are ready We are ready to go. Oh, good. For a moment, I thought I heard someone at the front door, and I was like, what now? No, I think it was someone upstairs. Yeah. Uh, new neighbours upstairs as of the past month or so, I think. And uh, they've obviously been unpacking, so they clump around a lot. But uh, it's fine. 
Uh, right, so today, audio levels are clipping a bit of loud peaks. Yes, that's what I was afraid of. I'm going to turn it down a bit more. We yes. were talking about this just before <clears throat> we went live. We have we have been tweaking, and yeah. the tweaking is hard. Let's go down to... Oh, that's a lot of gain. There we go. <laughs> Let's go to 11 decibels yeah, of I, gain. I, I just went from 2 decibels to 10 decibels and was like, no! <laughs> right, okay, uh, that... That does not look like it's clipping for me, so that should be more pleasant. I don't want to take... Excellent. Yeah, if we take it down any lower, then it's going to go quiet if we're not talking high. But, oh well. Let us know. If we're still clipping, then let us know, and I can just chalk off the uh, the game completely. Uh, good. So, today, tweaking, DP, tweaking, how very dare. <laughs> so... Um, right, so today we're going to spec up a computer. Um, so or two. Or two. <laughs> sure. Yeah. I think I think we should do our AMD version and then our Intel version. Yeah. I'm, because obviously we can have two builds open and just snap them. Yeah, I'm up for that. Yeah. So um, uh, what what prompted this <coughs> to happen is... Um, uh, uh, you're right there. Death. Good. Um, uh, I sold a computer. I sold one of the computers this week, um, so there's a gap on my show bench, and so I'm just like, oh, I've got to replace that one. And I said, I need to. I said to Caradog, I need to build up something cheaper, because the problem with my display computers is that they're too expensive, basically. Um, and, and most of most of the customers who come in asking for gaming PCs, I say, how much are you looking to spend? What's your budget? Kind of thing. Um, and uh, we have a quick chat, and the budget is not what I've got on the shelf, basically. Um, so, yeah, the two computers that I've had out are are like sort of 1200 and 1350 a piece. And most people, they're looking to spend like seven or 800 pounds, that kind of area. Mm -hmm. um, and with current graphics card prices, that budget is actually very, very difficult to achieve at the moment. Yeah. Um, it can be, obviously it can be done, but you have to use, <clears throat> it requires a bit more thinking than just simply just slap everything in the cart that you can afford and you're golden. Yeah. So we thought, you know what, let's actually do this on the podcast. Let's go through PC Part Picker and figure out what we would build to put in the shop. So doing it yeah doing yeah. it effectively limited to new only yeah so here well the rules are new parts but except with the exception of graphics cards i would like new graphics cards but with the graphics card market the way it is we have to concede the fact that that is just not possible at certain budgets yeah, absolutely. or not sensible at certain yeah. budgets like, let's face it, the 6500 XT, it's not a good value card. Not unless you're buying it for like £170, you know. Or less, yeah. Yeah. If you're, Although... if, if you're paying above £200 for it, you may as well buy a second-hand 1060, 1070 or something like that. Yeah. You know, so... Yeah. Also, just to cut across, Ben Laird did super chat us £5. It was several yes. minutes ago, yes, and I didn't I hear you say anything, oh. so I thought I'd just comment on it because yeah. I didn't oh, okay. recognise no. you saying anything, and I went, oh no, it scrolled off. Yeah, no, I did say thank you to Ben Laird for the five pounds. That's fine. Now it's he gets good. another thank you. You've got two thank yous for one super chat now. Look at that. <laughs> yeah. So imagine what, happen imagine what happens when you concentrate mm. or something. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, uh, greatly appreciated though. Again, just just for good measure. Anyway, yes. Um, so yeah, so uh, so the rules are um, new parts only because that's the thing. Whenever you do a budget build, whenever I've made videos on you know budget builds, people have been like, "Oh, I could have done so much better with a second hand this, that, and the other." And I'm like, "Yeah, but uh, customers don't walk into a shop to buy a second hand computer." Well, yeah. sometimes they do, but most of the time, people are like, "I want a brand new computer. I don't want a box of second hand bits." So yeah. um, we so rules are. Got to be new, with the exception of the graphics card, just because the market is crazy and you have to make a concession there. Um, yeah, absolutely. So we're looking to try and... I think for the first one, we want to go as cheap as possible without it being bad. So we're looking for... We're not looking for... We're, we're going to start with the cheapest we can find and then go, right, now let's spend a little bit more here in order to just get significantly more performance kind of thing. Yeah. And then we can talk about why you don't buy the cheapest one on the list. Um, so yeah, yeah. that's the, that's the theory here. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. And I think 
it's it's going to be a case of kind of comparing what the cheapest one or two yeah um, processors are, and then what the cheapest one or two motherboards are, and then kind of picking the rest out from there. Yeah, agreed. Also, Daniel Emberley, ever do budget builds for smaller offices have trouble finding suitable non-window cases? Yeah, big time. Um, there's, uh, it actually frustrates me that there are very, there's almost, there are, there's no sensible cases that are actually nice. Um, you know, like if you buy a case that doesn't have a side panel on it, you've got to buy a really cheap, nasty thing like a, a Fractal Core series. And the fra Fractal Core series are just cheap tin boxes. Um, uh, so, or you have to go very expensive into the uh, I'm too cool to have a window on my computer class. Um, and then at that point, it's just really expensive and kills the budget. I 100% sympathize. I have the same problem. Uh, the most recent build I did, the one that I've just sold, I rehoused it into a um, Fantex P400A non-RGB. And I was like, it's got a tempered glass side panel and I wanted to, I would rather sell this customer a solid side panel, but you're not going to find one. So I was like, yeah. sorry, he's getting tempered glass. He doesn't need tempered glass, but he's getting tempered glass because there's nothing else. Yeah. So, yeah. Certainly nothing nice. Yeah, looking for non-window cases is ridiculously difficult. Like, don't get me wrong, I like windowed cases, but I also understand that they're not suitable for every build. You, you don't need windows on office computers, like, like you say. So, yeah, I 100% sympathize. We should do a segue. On, um, uh, a segue? Not a segue. We should do a tangent on that while we're specking um, and actually look at, see, see what's available on that front as well. So we can talk about that. Hmm. Um, so yeah, Bitfenix Nova Mesh. Hmm. I don't like Bitfenix, but I haven't looked at them in a long time. Yeah, it depends on which one it is because yeah. some of them, it's just like, yeah, that's all right. Yeah, all right. Oh, you've got something like um, I think. Oh no, that does have a side panel. I thought the yeah. I thought that didn't have one. Mm -hmm. uh, if I just go. No side panel. Yeah. What options do we even have? Uh, just to make a mental note while we're scrolling, we are occupying buying this spot, so prices on the yeah. top couple of rows are not visible. So just keep that in mind when we're browsing. You can have one of that. Yeah. Is that which one is that one? Is that the Bitfenix Nova? That's the Nova. Yeah. Uh, and that's the one we were looking at. Yeah. No. Oh, there's a Nova Mesh apparently. So presumably that's an Airflow version. Yeah. I have the black and blue version of that. And yeah. it is absolutely fine. Yeah. It I was is solidly say, fine. Yeah. I was going to say, I think I've seen one of these before. And that was my response to it as well. I was like, yeah, because I saw the Bitfenix badge. And I was like, oh, oh God, it's a, a Bitfenix. One. Oh. And is that the mesh? Yeah, there's the mesh. That's oh. a different mesh version. Mm. That actually looks that, all right. I was about to say, that looks quite nice. That looks all That looks really nice, actually. Ah, that's how you change picture. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it looks like the RGB version is slightly different. Or unless it's just the way... Actually, I think that's just the photography angle. That's the angle. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And also, because it's got the lighting behind the mesh, you can see the lines a bit more prominently. Yeah. yeah. Um, 40 quid, though. 40 that's, quid. That's, that's not, not bad. bad. Yeah. yeah. And that's that's not windowed, is it? Is it? Is it yeah. Does it come in black? Uh, apparently. Yeah. Let's have a look at the black option. Yes. That goes up a bit in price. That's actually However, pretty 45 good. Forty-five pound. Yeah, but still, that's less than fifty quid for a case that you mm. wouldn't be ashamed to sell oh, to someone. If you somehow got free shipping out of overclockers, it'd be thirty-five pound. Yeah. So if you're close to them. Yeah, that's that's a good. Yeah, that's interesting actually because um yeah that's that's not terrible. Like I like I said, that's a case because the issue the problem with the with computers now I I have sold computers in the past. And I've put them in cheap cases to to push the price down. And when they've come back into the shop, like a couple of years later for a service or just something like that, they've come in, I've looked at it, and I've been, just been like, ugh, what part of me thought this case was a good idea? Oh, you know, the case has just not aged well. It's scratched up, it's dirty, panels have been pushed in and stuff like that. Um, and yeah. That's the not terrible. The back is standard cheap stamped tin, yeah. but then the problem is, though, it's very difficult to find cases that aren't nasty mm. cheap stamped tin. It's got tin. two USB 3 front ports. 
yeah. two front audios, has a reset switch or an RGB switch, and has a power button. So it's not terrible yeah. on the I.O. What's the interior look like? It looks like... It looks like... Wow, do they just not show a picture of the inside? That's, yeah. Still, that top I.O. does look pretty good. Uh, you know, the, the, the USB ports look nice and then stuff like that, because that's often what suffers on cheap cases. They have really nasty front panels. And the problem is the front panel is what people see when they're pushing the power button and plugging stuff into it. There is a possibility it might look something like that, even though that's the side panel version. Yeah. Oh yeah, so it's got the it's got the modern layout with a power supply enclosure and stuff. So it's a Possibly. modern yeah. yeah. Yeah, that looks yeah. I'd run that. Yeah, I think that looks nice. I'm almost tempted to say let's buy uh I Oh yeah, see I'm probably not buying a case today because I've still got we've got a Corsair 220T that um because I move I moved the contents of it to a different case. So Although we're going to spec up with a case today, I'm probably not buying a case today. Uh, you, there's also an ARGB option. Yeah. So, interesting. I'm probably going to buy one of those at some oh, point. It's got, the... a, um... it's got a fan hub in it. Yeah. Well, it was more of a fact that it said controller. That I just went, oh, does oh, it have a USB interesting. Interf- uh, does it have a USB interface to not it? Not that I can see. Because if it's see. not, it's not a controller. It's a hub. That, see, yeah, we, that's why I went, yeah. ooh, because it said controller. But. Yeah, for, for those of you who are not sure, um, there's that you, there's two types of this of this kind of connector. This, this is for plugging in your ARGB and your fans. And a hub will take the existing fan and uh, RGB signals from the motherboard and repeat them out to the fans. A controller actually has a USB interface so you can alter it with software. Now the key thing is is that if you have a hub you still need a controller whether it's built into your motherboard or otherwise. Yeah, no, you plug it into the addressable RGB on the motherboard. Yeah, so it's a hub not a controller. Yeah. yeah. That's a shame because I yeah. thought it coming with a 6 channel controller that would be mm. That to be honest, would be impressive. Yeah, that would be very impressive. I'm. I, I wasn't expecting it, but I was just suddenly like, yeah. "Oh, wait, really?" Yeah. Yep. But no. I've just I've just turned down the gain just another slight notch. But I tell you what, I'll bring the mic down slightly. I don't know why we're getting so much out of the mic at the moment. Yeah. Um. That's cool. Uh. Sound settings. Oh, uh, do you have to have the temper glass to get the ARGB? I wonder. I would imagine so, because why would you get ARGB without a side panel? Because you can have it through the mesh at the front. I guess, but come on. But, yeah. If, if, yeah. I'd, I'd, if you like LEDs, you're probably going to want a side panel as well. Yeah. Fair enough. Fair enough. Uh, where the hell is the mic? Come on. There it is. No. There we go. You want that F- one. Bloody hell. Right, levels. <laughs> oh, wow. The levels are at 100. Yeah. Let's bring that down a touch. Okay. Oh, that's that's completely tan. Man, it's amazing how logarithmic this is. Right, let's go. Ninety-six. And then I'm going to bring in the gain again. Oh yeah, there's the other mesh there. Oh, I know why this is broken. It's because we were fiddling with it at the end of last week. <laughs> I think that was it. Is this the one that Chris used? No, there we it's go. not. That's still that's still a touch low. All right, sorry guys, I'm still fiddling with the sound. Uh, let's go eight. Eight decibels of gain. There we go. Right, how's that sound to people now? Hmm. Doesn't that look horridly cheap? Yes. Just because of the shiny bit of plastic on the yep. front. Um, gloss black oh, pla- gloss black plastic never. Do not. Do not gloss black plastic. Ever. It's got built-in card reader. <laughs> sure. For the two people that are going to use it. Any case that has got bulging side panels like that is an automatic no. Um, because you you only ever see that on cheap, nasty cases. 
Um, and it's yeah, it ruins the lines of the case in my opinion, and it also means that there's probably really bad cable management on the inside that requires the bulging side yeah. panels. You can tell this is an old case. Mm. Yeah, because it's got drive cages. And it's got a 120 mil AIO in the back. Yeah. The front of that actually looks quite attractive. That's a nice, clean mesh front. And mm. if you needed DVD drives, because yeah. now and then you do still get people who are like, I need it to have a DVD drive for, or a Blu-ray drive. Yeah. That's actually quite a nice looking option. Um, yeah. That, oh, I don't like that it's a slope. I dislike wedges, but sure. That's not awful. Yeah. It's another Bitfenix case that isn't yeah. seemingly absolutely awful. I think my pro my problem with Bitfenix is whenever Bitfenix do something a bit odd, they tend to get it wrong. Oh, like that, uh, like that cube. Yeah, like the weird cube one with the handles on it that is the size of a large micro ATX case and takes a nano ATX board. And you're like, this thing, uh, like the actual the actual footprint of this case. Is almost as big. As, well, probably like on your desk, it's going to take up the it same space as a two twenty T. More because it's much wider. Yeah, but and it's wider, and it's a nano ITX. It's just like no, yeah. no. So, yeah. Daft. But yeah, I yeah. quite like that. Oh, is this the um oh, so that's the, stone the fire fire. R one? Yeah, that's a case that that's I want to look nice. at. It looks kind of similar to the Corsair. Uh, Corsair. The Cooler Master N six hundred, I think, is similar to that one. And I also quite like the look of that one as well. Yeah. The problem is these cases are never... That's £56. Pound, that's pretty basically. good. Yeah. I was going to say the yeah. problem is, is historically I've found that these cases are not particularly well priced. Or I have difficulty finding them on, um, uh, on Amazon as well. Uh, yeah. I think there are some options is the answer to that. But... Mm. Oh, you can get a mess of there You can get a meshify C. meshify C yeah. with no with no see through side. Yeah, panel. however, it, cool. it's seventy two pounds. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. But you can get a meshify C without yes. a glass side panel. Absolutely. So yeah. if you were dead set on the meshify yeah. C, but then went, oh, I, I hate side panels. Yeah, you have an That's option right. at least. The, I think the meshify C is probably your best bet for a sensible office computer. However, just seventy five pounds for a for a non seventy five pounds for a non exotic case. So you know, no side panel, no RGB fans or anything like that. Seventy five pounds is a lot of money for that. Yeah, I would personally, if I was building it, I'd build it in the black one at that. Yeah, I quite like the look of Where that bit, Phoenix. Yeah, one? I I almost wish that we were buying. In fact, I'm almost tempted to say like. If we put this on the list and we actually buy our list today, which we may or may not do, I'm almost tempted to say we should. I should buy one of those in anyway for stock, just so I can take a look at it. Ah, that was not the buy button I meant. Because I've looked at components, not a build. That's why. Yeah. Uh, cool. All right. Well, scroll. so that's kind of interesting. Scroll. Has the scroll gone weird? I'm just we... having a moment with scroll. There okay. Yeah, there we go. Um, Choose a case. Ugh. Uh, Antec VSK 3000B. Yeah, what's that one look like? I think. There you go, there's all of the Nova meshes. Mm. Oh my god, £73. Yeah, that's too much. Excuse me? See the problem? As soon, see, the, at that point, you're now competing with Corsair, and you're not going to win that fight. That's not a fight you're yeah. going to win. There you go. So, yeah. Uh, just look up the Antec VSK 3000B. Oh. That didn't do what I was hoping for. I will do that instead. Sorry, the 3000... Antec VSK 3000B. Uh, no space. Oh, uh, and actually, d ditch the B. Yeah, just yeah. look at the VSK 3000. That's going to be the gist of it. All the rest of it is going to be subversions. Oh yeah, that's the one I thought it was. This is okay as a minimum standard, but you it's want a micro ATX. Yeah, this I've used this case before as well. I've done office boxes, and this is a good one for a cheap for a cheap office box where, like, you're looking for three hundred pound build cost. Um, however, it. Yeah, I was about to say I'm not paying forty quid for it. Forty pounds. Yeah. I was about to say 
40 pounds. It works if it's less than 30 pounds. Oh. But yeah, 40 quid for a biscuit tin, no. It's why I'm still so enamoured with those crappy ones that I'm using in the office. Because mm. they were like 18 pound each. Yeah, and yes, they're tin boxes, but they're 18 quid. So who gives a crap, you yeah. know? Whereas the problem, like that. yeah, that Antec, I have used it. It is a good minimum standard, and because it's got Antec on it, you know, it's got a good brand name on it. So when other people look at it, they're like, oh, "Okay, it's an Antec." You know, they they, they tried, you know, yeah. um, but it's got to cost less than thirty pounds to make any sense whatsoever. Thirty quid yeah. on Amazon, yeah, fair That's enough. That's better, but I'd still yeah. not want to be spending more than twenty quid on one of those. <sighs> yeah, I think when I say th- when I say less than thirty pounds, what I'm actually looking for is like twenty five tops, like twenty five, twenty six, you know, twenty five plus change tops, kind of yeah. thing. But yeah, um, you bought a seventeen pound fifty CIT. Yeah, the CIT cases. Yeah, if if you're building for other people, don't. Um, the tr- the trick that I've gone for now is um, um, when people come in and they say I'm looking to buy a computer. Sometimes they say sometimes customers are upfront and they'll be like, "How do you compare versus say Curry's?" You know, like could I go down to Curry's and get something cheaper, kind of thing. And I'm like, glad you asked. That's a legitimate question. And my my answer to that is always, I don't build cheap computers. I build good computers. And I say to them, you will find something cheaper at Curry's, but you, what you'll get from me is something that's actually got quality components and good build in it, and that will cost you more money, but you'll get something that's actually good. Um, and so that's the problem, and that for that reason, I don't buy the £17.50 CIT cases. I used to because I was building cases and I was competing with Curry's PC World prices, um, and when those computers come back in for service and the case is beaten up because it's a piece of crap, you're like, this was a mistake. I should not have put it in this case. I should have charged them another £20 and put it in a Corsair. Yeah. And then it would be something to be proud of. Yeah, it costs them more, but most people will pay more if you tell them it's better. So, yeah. Uh, what are you looking at? £102 for a... For a 12100F? Yes. That's not bad. That's some good pricing, that. Yeah, is. like because if we so we're building up a computer and we're starting at the bottom. That's our CPU to start with, isn't it? Because look how far I have to scroll to find an AMD. Oh yeah, I have to add another hundred and twenty pounds. Yeah, hundred and twenty pounds is half of a ten sixty. Yeah, yeah, and. It's amazing how it's changed. Just yeah. AMD don't have a bottom end, and they don't care because they don't need a bottom end. Yeah, but just that. Mm. Is it worth the £40 to go to an 11400F? You go back a generation, but you gain two more cores and four more threads. Yeah. That's the, that's the question, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, do you want to pull up, pull up a YouTube um, tab? Um and just do uh, what I do. I just do Gamers Nexus 11, uh, 12100F because they'll have they'll have a review on it and they'll have charts. Have they done the twelve? Oh yeah, they have. Yes, done they have. Too. There we go. So yeah, if you, I'm just going to make sure that the um, uh, thing is muted. Live gamer mute. There we go. Uh, yeah. So if you jump through to it, um, so let's see. It's faster than eleven four hundred. Yeah, there you go. That answers that question. For CSGO, which is the yeah. most CPU-bound game, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, do you just want to check a couple of other charts just to, just to validate? CSGO, CSGO, Cyberpunk. 12100 mm. is... Oh, 11400 is just above it. Lower there, okay. Yeah, okay, so it looks like they probably Far trade Cry low. Far Cry 6, 1080p, Far Cry... Oh. Oh, yeah, Far Cry 6, 1080p, oh, yeah. yeah. That's what we're building for, 1080p gaming, 11400. It is spitting distance. Yeah, they they trade blows, don't they? Uh, Red Dead Redemption, it is significantly slower. Well, significantly. Mm. It's still over 100 FPS. Yeah. Oh my god, it's over 100 FPS. It's over 140 FPS. From the cheapest CPU. Yeah. The, the past two generations of CPU are very, very exciting, aren't they? Like, I had a, oh I had a, 
I had a custom build in this week, <laughs> and amazing. sadly, the video is on the back burner because we hit a roadblock in that they needed a new motherboard, and they're not ready to buy that new motherboard yet. So the the video has been shelled. But it would have been a it would have been a video where I was upgrading someone from a Ryzen twenty six hundred X to a fifty six hundred X. Oh, nice! Now they already have sixteen gigs of RAM and a twenty sixty in there. Although the the RAM was sixteen gigs of twenty four hundred RAM. And we huh. were going up to 3600 RAM. So it would have been going from a 2600X and 2400 yeah. RAM to a 5600X and 3600 RAM. Same graphics card. And I was get doing benchmarks to show how, like, because, give it, keeping the same graphics card, you think, well, 2600X and 16 gigs of RAM? Oh. I just want to highlight this message so we get to it in a second. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, that is a very relevant point. Yes, yeah. Uh, Richard, we've seen your message. We'll be with you in a sec. Um, yeah, uh, and I, so I did the benchmarks, and the point was to show because the existing spec of the computer was just like that's not too shabby. That's pretty good. That's more than what most people. Pretty good. Have. Yeah, pretty good. <laughs> um, and uh, however, the, what the video, the message of the video that I was gearing the video towards was to demonstrate just how good the latest generation of CPUs is, and how. Even though we're going from a 2600 to a 5600, same class of CPU, we were looking at, in benchmarks, a potential 50% gain in benchmark score for Cinebench. Oh, you know, well, yeah. it's, it's, this is Cinebench, yeah, but still, um, you know, and c pair that with the increased memory speed, and they would potentially see, um, they would potentially probably see a good 10 between 10 and 20 percent improvement in games performance without changing the graphics card mm. which you know whereas most of the time you'd be like well it's the same graphics card it's not really going to make a difference yeah so yeah oh, um, but unfortunately they had a really peasant grade motherboard it was an a series chipset because it was a cyber power pc oh, and the a series chipset um it was an a320 yeah and it did not have a ryzen 5000 bios had a Ryzen 3000, but not 5000 BIOS. And I was like, we need a new motherboard. And she was just like, I don't have any more money right now. And I was like, that's unfortunate. We put it back together again. And It's also unfortunate that the A520 is just vanished. Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. Well, that I wouldn't have wanted to use that particular board anyway. She, she's coming back with a B550. Oh, yeah, yeah. So, no, yeah. If, they're, if they're happy to buy something yeah. else. But it was a case of yeah. because it's literally spare. Yeah. Um, yeah, that it would have it would have been the, the A five twenty. It's in here somewhere. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> there are motherboards. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember selling it because there's nothing that I could have put it in because it's no, an exactly. ITX board. I'd have remembered that. Uh, the only ITX case I've only sold one ITX case recently, and that had the uh, i five in it. So yeah. it's in here somewhere. Anyway, right. Let's get back to the chat. Um, so yeah, Richard says you've got to factor in motherboard prices though. If you want the 11400F, you really should be going with a B560 to get the RAM speeds, whereas an 11400F can be used with a H610 and still use RAM at 3200. Yeah, so this is the next thing is although we're looking at a 12th gen CPU, we have to consider motherboard prices. Now thankfully, of course, cheap Intel motherboards have just arrived, haven't they? I think so, yeah. So theoretically, we should be good. Normally, I would say, yeah, the 11400 might end up being cheaper motherboard-wise, but I think there's now a new wave of cheap Intel boards that will save us here. I'm actually going to open a separate system builder, and I'm going to build an 11-12, 12100F yeah. and 11400F sure. PC, yeah. and then we can compare the prices. Yeah. <laughs> Bojan Karanovic says, gave up on cheap cases. Nowadays, I just get some wood and make one. <laughs> yeah. Valid, valid. Uh, for what it's worth, my version of a non-GPU basic AMD onboard graphics. Um, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. We, we will be having a graphics card in here. We're not building an office box at the moment, despite the talk about office box cases. Um, so yeah, you bought a 5600X, so you're going from a 2600 to a 5600X. Yeah. Nice. That'll be that'll be really tasty. The fifty six hundred X is a portable wrecking machine. Are we going to stick CPU coolers on these? Um, because I was thinking if we do, we'd use something like the Hyper Four One Two or something like that. Let's start with no, yeah. and let's see what the budget looks like afterwards. Because we can get away with using the stock blower on this. Certainly However, on an i three. Yeah. yeah. 
However, if we're building a computer to sell in the shop that has a side panel and everything, spending an extra 10 or 15 quid on a cheap tower cooler makes it look significantly more impressive. And you've got to consider the fact of, you know, um, it might cost a little bit more and the customer will pay a little bit more, but because it looks nicer, it's more likely to sell. And that's part of the rule set we're playing with here. We're not, we're not building to rock bottom price. We're not building to dream spec. We're building something that is actually nice and will sell. That's the objective here. Uh, 412 or 212. They're very similar, aren't they? The 412 and the 212. But yeah, either way... The, the, four, the, the 412 is the new one, uh, yeah. if I remember correctly. Yeah. Uh, yes. Um... Cheap I Intel motherboards, that's an oxymoron. They do exist. They Where's do exist. Where's the chipset compatible thing there? There we go. That's the list of chipsets I wanted. Because these are the new ones. And I can never remember which one it is. So oh, big H same. Yeah. HX10, HX70, B660. Yeah. Fine. I would do like to... any of those exist? Yeah, see, like, also, I'd like to avoid the bottom end chipset because that means it'll be a really chintzy, oh. crappy looking motherboard, which, again, B560. won't sell. And also, I don't want to put in a really crap motherboard because then you introduce the same problem that my client this week had, where they bought a CyberPower PC and they had a custom build, but it actually wasn't very upgradable because it had a garbage motherboard in it, okay. which is now holding the entire system down from upgrades. Mercifully, it somehow supported 3200 megahertz RAM, but definitely didn't support 3600. P660 H670. Uh, Christopher Butt says, do you find your R customers want RGB? Um, most of them do, yes, because RGB looks really pretty. I've got RGB on all the computers in the shop, and people come in, they go, ooh, pretty kind of thing. Why are these um, not compatible? And there are some people who are just like, I'm not really interested in the LEDs, and I'm like, that's cool, I can build you one without LEDs. There's no problem. It's it's personal preference. And and that's what I, the computer that I sold, I actually oh. recased it into a non-RGB case, because I didn't think it was appropriate for the customer. That's why. So, yeah. I broke the part list. It's ah. fine. I'm going to have to undo the compatibility filter. Very because well. Because we're going to be sticking the wrong CPU on this motherboard. Oh, because I see. I accidentally clicked. Yeah. I thought I had two builds running in parallel. I didn't. I changed the CPU over. So ah, yes. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You can get a B660 for £108. And that's the cheapest B660. Let's see what it looks like. Yeah. So the B six sixty M. This is the latest. Um, and this is the one up set. from bottom on the chipset. Yeah. So this is the yeah. So this is the mid range chipset, and um, I'm going to get myself a big preview here, so I'm not having to go Ooh, down there. Uh, full screen preview. Give me that. Hmm. Um, so let's get a look at that. All right. Uh, yeah. No. No VRM heat sinks, which isn't a good sign. I mean, it's not going to need them. It's got an M2 slot. Um, it's not exactly inspiring, is it? Um, like this is this is kind of frustrating because it's just like, you know, I pay seventy quid for that board, but a hundred pounds. Uh, yeah, it's a hundred and eight pound for that. A hundred and eight. Yeah. Oh, God. Yeah. No, that's not good value for money. The next one is that. How much is that one? Hundred. 17, did I say? 117, yeah. 150, 15, yeah. sorry, 115. See, I mean, at least it's got a little bit more VRM on it, but man, this is, yeah, yeah this this is, this is... It is DDR4, this yeah. is a DDR4 board, yeah. Sorry. This is a bit of a, this is a bit of a struggle, this. Um, I don't know what I expected in all honesty, but yeah. It's not, mm, I'd probably... That's passable. Yeah. I, I prefer it to be ATX rather than micro, but it's passable. Yeah. Um, you, you know, I think that's probably, I mean, that's that's as good as we're going to get for 12th gen if we're trying to keep the price down at the moment, isn't it? The um, cheapest is this. And there. Uh, what do I think of the B450 Aorus Elite? Um, the B450 Aorus Elite uh, is. Have you got the ATX or the Micro ATX? Either way, it had a very, very troubled history. That motherboard. Uh, I believe all of its major hang-ups have been fixed in BIOS now. So as long as you update it to the latest BIOS, should be okay. 
I reviewed it when it was current generation and it was it was bad. I'm not going to lie. The BIOS was awful. However, I think the BIOS is basically completely fixed now. So should be absolutely fine. When I owned one, it was all over the place. But it has had a lot of work done to its BIOS since then. Uh, maybe uh, Asus Prime B660? B B if it's an Asus, it's probably going to be too expensive. Even even the Prime. That looks nice. For a cheap motherboard. That, that is a B660. Yes, that's not terrible. It is like 140 quid. Uh, no. Well, yeah. I don't yeah. know. It looks, where, all, it looks all right. Yeah, where's, where's the uh, Asus Prime B660? How much is that? Asus... Prime B six sixty. Oh, doesn't doesn't look like it's is a H six seventy. It looks like they don't. Have there one is yet. very little UK stock of oh, okay, these yeah. boards, as far as I can tell. Yeah, I mean they are brand new out, so it looks like they're still hitting yeah. the market at the moment. Yeah, no M two cooling. M two cooling not really a big deal on budget computers. It doesn't so, matter until you get into the high end, and oh, even sorry, then it's it? debatable. Asus. Pro Whoops. Prime, what was it? Asus Prime B660. B660. Uh, I've lost it in chat now. Plus D4, that'll be uh, it. Plus yeah. D4. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, that looks like an Asus Prime, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's amazing how every Asus Prime looks exactly the same. But in a way, that's kind of what you want. I like that the name of the product is actually Intel B660 LGA 1700 ATX motherboard with eight power stages, PCIe 4 slots, 3M.2 slots, Realtek 2.5 gigabit Ethernet, DisplayPort, HDMI, D sub rear, USB 3.2 Gen 2x2 Type C, front USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type C Aura Sync. That's the name of the product, apparently. <laughs> I think that's a typo. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, it looks it looks like an Asus Prime board without a price. Uh, I could, oh, it looks like, oh, there's price over there, but like oh, 192 and 145 from a company I've literally never heard of. I was going to say I don't know if they're going to dox me if I click on that link. So <laughs> yeah, um, deals. Oops. That's the two options. Okay. Oh, Google wonder why people don't use shopping. Grooves.land. Okay. Apparently they've got them. £145. Yeah. Fine. £145 compared that, that's to... How much, that's how much I'd expect to pay for an Asus Prime. Compared to £140. Would I take this gigabyte, that gigabyte, over that Asus? I'd take the gigabyte. Um, I would, but I'm biased. Yeah, I mean, well... In terms of actual spec and performance, they're probably exactly the same. There's probably no meaningful difference, except the Gigabyte, you get a built-in I.O. shield. Again, if we're talking about what you actually want to sell as well, you know, like that is a far more attractive board. And with the built-in I.O. shield, it looks a lot nicer as well. If you're wow. trying to build up presentation. Can I have some USB ports, please? Uh, that looks pretty good. You've got eight on the back. That's four of them are USB 2. And I'm spending 140 quid on this. I'm a bit sad. Yeah, it budget chips. There's chip. also this empty space here, and this empty space here. The budget chipset though probably doesn't have the lanes, because that's the problem that B550 has. Because all the B550 boards sad. have got USB 2s all over the back. That's that's the bit that that's why I don't like B550. I tolerate B550 because X570 is just too expensive. But B550 for AMD has exactly the same problem. All the motherboards are full of USB 2s on the back. At least I get more USBs on the Gigabyte. Yeah, that's an improvement. Yeah, 5 plus 1, that's bad. Yeah. 5 plus 1 is bollocks. You also get better audio um, yeah. options. Not that anyone uses any of yeah. the other ones, but it exists. And it's got... H oh, no, the Prime has got HDMI as well. It's but, got yeah. HDMI, DisplayPort, and VGA. Yeah. Nice. Yeah, I take the I take the gigabyte yeah. any day of the week. I'd probably take that. Yeah, bit of a weird layout on that one, but yeah. yeah. Either way, let's stick on. Let's stick on the what was that? What was our cheap options again? It was uh, like 117 or something like that. Uh, 115 for the slightly upgraded Asrock. Okay, let's stick that on there and move on because for our cheap option because at the moment the we, the motherboard is pricing us out of the 12th gen. Yeah, let's go for it. Let's stick one. on the cheap one for now, and then let's look at what 11th gen allows us to do. Yes, I know, because that's the wrong processor. D d d 
Open an incognito window for the other build or something. Cloak, remove, thank you. <laughs> yeah. There you go. Right, what did we say? Uh, 12, 100. Oops. Well, that's what we were running, but now we want to add in... There you go. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. So now, yeah, okay. Well, Carol's, let's... Uh, yeah, let's spec up the rest of this, and then we'll then we'll look at what yeah. happens if we switch to the eleventh gen and get a better motherboard, and see what that offers us. Because yeah. it might end up being price price equivalent, except the eleventh gen one is a nicer computer. Yeah. So how much are we sticking in here? Uh, sixteen, 16 gigs. gigs. Never not sixteen gigs. So yeah, I vote just the cheapest sixteen gigs that isn't terrible. Uh, so like probably the Vengeance LPX. Unless you want to have a look at B die predictions, um, not specifically. I just want speed. Not and then yet. To go, yeah. Dee 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 dee. Thirty two hundred. Yeah. Okay. And then just go price. Right and sixteen gig minimum. And then, uh, yeah, this is um, one by eight. So oh just, yes, oh so, yeah. I'm just I was just looking at the price for one by eight versus two by yes. eight. Yes. Yeah. Um, almost is, never. Yeah, and it almost is not never, worth it. Yeah. In the vast majority of cases, buying two individual sticks is never better value. Yeah, I think it's only because when I first looked, mm. way back when, like when I was building my very first PC, mm. it was. Okay, so it was, yeah. it was just a case of that stuck with me. Yeah. Let's see what timings we've got on this. Yeah. Um, but we're going to be going with I'll catch up on that. that. Let's see. I take Camel it. uses a whole three USB ports. Yeah, you don't need a lot. Most people don't need many USB ports, but you never know. I think I'm fairly big on USB ports just because on um, certainly on quite a few of my computers, I use a lot of USB. Like the stream PC that we're running here, the USB ports are decked out with cameras, microphones, um, and all the rest of it. Timings, well, none. <laughs> Yes. Okay then. <laughs> um, what timings do you have? No. Okay. <laughs> uh, so yeah, USB is subjective, I guess. Uh, if you go with an AMD graphics card, you're going to laugh. If it's good value, like uh, again, I don't like the 6500, but the 6600 XT is not a bad card. I don't care what the designs are. You know. Um, so yeah, we'll use what is appropriate, and you have to oh, look okay. at the big picture of That's what safe. is available. You know. Like, yeah. um, I've had a 30, I've had 36, in the shop, in stock, I've had a couple of 3060s and a couple of 6600 XTs. And the two cards are very, very similar in performance, with the 3060 being slightly faster. But the 3060 is like £100 more, minimum. And you've got to look at that and be like, okay, well, it's slightly faster, but it's also another £100. And when you're trying to budget down to the 600 to £800 pound range, that doesn't work, basically. So suddenly that 6600 XT that is quite capable of taking a good bash at 1440p gaming, suddenly that's looking like a really good deal, you know. So you've got to look at, you've got to look at what's available. Now, if you're building for yourself, you can be like, nope, I'm an NVIDIA fanboy, that's what I want. And in a way, I'd agree. I prefer NVIDIA these days. However, when we take all of the BIOS, at, BIOS? when we take all of the bias <laughs> the out bias. of it, and we're simply going, what is the best bang for buck? The picture is different, is what I find. Um, do buy an AliExpress X seventy nine board? Oh no, not 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 high end desktop. Never. No. Um, let's see. Amazon have ballistics 3216 gigs for 50 quid. Damn, son. That's all right. Will any bonuses that we find from special offers, we'll apply those later on. Because what we're going to do, we're going to build up a spec, and then I think we're going to see, right, where can we buy this stuff from? Because one of the problems with using PC Part Picker is I don't want to buy all my parts from five different shops and pay for delivery five times. I want to buy it all from Amazon if I can and not pay delivery because I have Prime. Um... But so, yeah, uh, so if we find better deals on Amazon in the moment, then that's bonus points because we've managed to bring the price slightly down at checkout. So we'll call that coupon bonuses. Um, and also just a quick thing, just to mention for people who are watching, we're specking in pounds at the moment um, for computer components. 
pounds and dollars are roughly the same um, because we've got we've got tax and all the rest of it already added on to these prices. So uh, if something costs say a hundred pounds here, it's probably about a hundred dollars in the U.S. Um, but the difference is this is already including any sales tax, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So if you're not sure what these prices mean, you can roughly equate them directly to U.S. dollars. Um, RTX 3050 allegedly released in a week. The the 3050, I think that is going to be good, especially because the 60 because the 6500 XT is bad. Uh, I think the 3050 is going to be the savior of the bottom end. We'll find out. Depends as for 6500 XT is sold for 100 pound less though. True. Um, because if it's 100 pound less, it's still the case. So that's a massive difference still. Yeah, that's true. If the 3050 clocks in at like 400 pounds, then it's just like. Pfft. You know, and considering the 3060, you're not going to find that anywhere for less than 500 pounds. So the 3050, it'll go out at 350, 400. You mark my words. Yeah. That's not like remember. That's not what the uh, that's not what the MSRP is. But by the time it actually hits the shelves and people put on the price of what they think people are willing to pay, you mark my words. It'll be 350 or higher. So yeah. 6500 XT is 400 euros. Oh, no, all of the no. Yeah. Yeah. MSRP is fictional. Yeah. And it's a big shame. Big shame. Right. What are we looking at? We're looking at SSDs. Mm -hmm. um, Just minimum size of 480 gig, maximum size of 20 terabytes. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> let's see. What's the price on that SN550? 68 pounds. Mm hmm. Um, a crucial P2 is seventy one ninety five. Yeah, and the P2 is okay. Is the P2 better than an SM550? I don't know. And if it know. is better, is it better by four pounds kind of thing? That, yeah. That's the question you start getting with SSDs, and SSDs are really hard. Yeah. I've got an SM550 in the shop, and I probably... I, I think I have both of those models in the shop, so hypothetically we could find out. I yeah. think they're going to be similar, because... Um, I haven't spent time on the SN550, but the, the Crucial P2, it's got very good burst speeds. But um, if you like, it'll do two gigabits, two gigabytes per second. However, as soon as you transfer more than like forty gigabytes in a single operation, it'll go up to forty gigabytes, and then it'll crash down to hundred megabytes per second because the cache is full. So mm. basically, it's a race to idle SSD. I mean, own... that's every S. That's literally every SSD in existence, other than enterprise drives now. So yeah. it doesn't matter. That's the thing. The like, way you fix that is by buying a two terabyte SSD. Yeah, like it used to be better than that, but I have a feeling that that is just the world we're stuck in now. Another alternative is something like an MX five hundred, which is serial ATA. So you're limited to about four fifty megs per second, but it doesn't cap out. So it's a question of. What's faster, a consistent 450 megs per second or burst of 2 gigabytes than 100? Um, and it depends on what you're doing, really. I've got an MX500 as my archive drive at home because when I transfer data to that, I'm tr usually transferring a couple of hundred gigabytes at a time. So I'd rather have the consistent speed. Um, however, for general purpose day-to-day -day use and games and stuff like that, the P the P two is going to be better, I think. So, the SN five fifty has TLC, and the P two got changed to QLC. Does the SN five fifty still have TLC? That's the thing. Because the problem also is also a case of does it actually matter? Yeah, because the problem is they keep changing them. Well, I was going to say more. The point is the fact of obviously we're pairing this with an i three. Yes, that as well. We're yep. pairing this with an i three. We're pairing this with whatever cheap graphics card we can get. Yeah, it's also a case that. I'd say stick on the SN550 because it's the cheapest one there, and I'd be amazed if the user will ever notice the difference. Yeah, it's not You're an it's not an ADATA SU630. Yes, which is what I, yeah <laughs> the yes the uh, the system integrator's favourite. Yeah. So yeah, I would. Uh, I would. Yeah, stick on an SN550. Probably. Uh, yeah. Damn, the 660 piece yeah. still exists. Yeah. Also, the P2, 2 terabytes for 150, that's not bad. Yeah. Not going to put that in this one, but it's a good option. 
Good. Decision made then. Uh, I'm going to put on my I'm going to put on my jumper because I'm getting cold. Okay. It's winter and I get so cold. Okay. I'm going to disappear into black. Cooler Master MWE White V2. Mm, yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's fine. I will upgrade you for only a small amount of currency to the Colink Classic Power. Colink Classic Power. That sounds. That sounds terrible. Yeah. I don't like any of these options at this price. Oh, whatever. I'll just be in black then. Uh, um, Where do we have to go before we get something that I actually... Hmm. Oh, it's a system power 9. That, that'll be fine. Oh no, it's 400 watts. Yeah, that's the problem with the system power 9. It pops up at low prices, but it's a low one as well. What's that 300 EVGA BQ? Watts. What? What's the, the top of the screen? EVGA BQ. That's not going to be awful, is it? I thought the... EVJ could be wrong. PSUs, several of them were a bit crap. Yeah, if I can't remember. Yeah, Adam Williams says gold rated minimum PSU, not on this budget. Gold rated, you're looking at seventy quid plus. You're not going to get that on this budget. Forty five pound for a gold EVGA uh, oh. GD twenty nineteen. Wow, forty five. I kept. Oh uh, yeah, all right. Is this I mean, an like, look at the rest of potato the, yeah. of the power supply? Like, look at the rest of the list. They're all bronze. My point still stands. This is just an outlier that's there purely to troll me. So, yeah. Sai so says they're crap. What's up, Pete Richardson? How's it going? What is the budget? Um, the budget is as low as possible. Um, so And even less than that. Yeah. We're trying to do it, it. We're going as low as possible without actually being bad. That's that's the budget. So it's a case of yeah, we're we're kind of going sort of, you know, we're paying as little as possible. So if something is going to cost another thirty or forty quid. Then no, basically, can we okay. steal? We cannot steal. We cannot use secondhand parts. According to the LTT list from two years ago, it's a tier A. And according to the Tom's Hardware mm. list, it's also apparently a tier A as well. Oh, well, So there apparently you go, it's actually not a potato. Yeah. It's just, yeah, the reason why it's cheap is it's just very boring because it's not modular or anything like that. But I don't, boring is acceptable. Um, boring is acceptable in this build, um, especially for a power supply because you're only ever going to see a couple of inches of the cables anyway by the time it's cable yeah. tied. There we so, go. So, yeah. So, sans GPU, we're at £431 and a penny. Yeah. Refurbished. Uh, refurbished is... Um, refurbished, I would say, is a coupon bonus. When we actually go to buy... When we go to put everything in the in the basket, if we spot someone selling what we're after as, or, some, or an equivalent, refurbished, and it's a bit cheaper, then we'll say, awesome, you saved a bit of money. Now you can go and buy yourself a nice keyboard, you know. Um, however, the act the spec has to be brand new. Uh, does bronze to gold really make a difference to your electricity bill? It doesn't. Um, efficiency really doesn't matter to ah. your actual bill in any meaningful way. However, when you go up to a higher rated power supply, a more efficient power supply, it generally implies that, like broadly speaking, it's probably going to be a better quality power supply because it has to be better quality in order to meet those efficiency standards. It's also going to produce a lot less heat, which means the fan will be quieter. And that can make a big difference as well, because cheap power supplies can have very noisy fans in them. Um, so it's a case of you're not going to save any money by going to a gold, but if you go to a bronze rate, if you go to a gold rated power supply, um, you can pretty much be certain that it's not going to be terrible. In, va in the vast majority of cases, so long as it's not an outlier. Like, there's always a particular model that's bad, something, something gigabyte power supplies. Um, however, broadly speaking, if it's gold rated, it's probably going to be pretty good, which is why a lot of people will say never not gold, because you can't go wrong. 
However, However there are, it doesn't actually mean it's good. No. And there are also plenty of bronze power supplies that are fine. There are plenty of bronze power supplies that are completely fine. Like for years, we were using um, Corsair CX Builders power supplies or CXMs, and they were fine, you know. So yeah, less ripple and heat than Econ. Uh, ripple, pff, neither here nor there. It's conversion rates basically. So the efficiency is if you're if you have an efficiency of ninety percent, and your drawing and your CPU draws a hundred watts the power supply is going to draw 110 watts from the wall because there's a 10% efficiency loss along those lines. So um, obviously, if you're now, if you've got a big gaming computer that's pulling 800 watts and you're losing 10% of that, you're burning 80 watts of power in heat in the power supply and you've got to get 80 watts of heat out of the power supply. However, in reality, very few computers are actually using that much power. Um, so, yeah, it's it's long and complicated, but going for a higher efficiency power supply generally implies that it's going to be better. Not a sure thing, but it's a good it's a good guideline. Also, those fake ninety five plus gold poop. Yeah, again, this is also assuming that the 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 actual power supply is not a scam. So, yeah. Um, you're buying a secondary NVMe for more storage? Yes. Do PSUs ever become outdated? Is a gold PSU from 15 years ago still good? Probably. Probably. Um, obviously, they've all got a shelf life, but I've seen plenty of people running old power supplies that are just... They're still fine. They still put out the same power. They've still got the same rails on them, and they seem to be going strong. Um, so, yeah. It's... The likelihood of a power supply damaging anything when it fails is very, very low in my experience. So I don't have a problem running old power supplies. If the power supply was chocked full of dust and it was really grossy, I would be very suspicious of it. But if it's in good condition and it doesn't make any unpleasant noises, it's probably fine. Capacitors go bad in them, potentially. But, you know, when they do, you're going to know and you buy a new one. So uh, let's see. Chris S says the SN570 is 80 quid for a terabyte on Amazon right now. That looks promising. Right. Okay, where are we up to? A, B, C or D or vote now. <laughs> All right. A, B, C or D. All right, are we looking at uh, 11th gen motherboards yes. here? Yes. Yeah. These are B560M boards. All right, I'm going to have a look. Uh, okay, so let's start over here. We've got B560M. Uh, we've got M.2. We've got a very, very boring looking I.O. at the back. That looks dangerously like four or five USB ports there, uh, which looks problematic. Uh, everything else is going to be humdrum, ho-hum. Um, I'm a big fan of the DS3H series. Uh, I have built with a lot of DS3H motherboards. Never had a problem with them, so I I like this I like this one a lot because I've never had an issue with one, and I've used a lot of them. Um, so I'm biased toward this one. Also looks just as boring, but uh, it's a boring one that I'm familiar with. Um, same deal. God, they're all the same, aren't they? Uh, is the VRM about the same? We've got uh, five inductors. I know that's not indicative, but you get the idea. Five long top. Yeah, the VRM setup is more or less identical on all of them, to all intent and purpose. The MSI, you get a, a little plate on your M.2. Not really going to matter at this level. Um, I don't really like the design of this one. I don't like all the lines on the board. It makes it look very busy. Aesthetically, I dislike it. What's the difference between those two? Uh, the Pro has... Okay, the Pro E has got an extra M.2 slot. No, that's an NGFF for wireless, I think. So that's, a, that's an integrator board. Uh, I'd take the Gigabyte. Are they all the same price? No. Okay, tell me about the prices. Uh, meanwhile, Antonio Lambranca, I'm the probably murdering your name, I'm sorry. Thank you very much for the £5 super chat. 
Uh, in Portugal, IC, IT supplier's price for shops was lower than the shop retail price. Is it not the same here in the UK? Yes and no. Uh, there are IT suppliers out there that will give you favorable pricing, but it usually only works if you're buying in quantity. Um, so I'd, if I were building five or more of these computers, that would make sense. However, when you're building one-offs and you're just buying ones and twos of everything, by the time you've paid delivery costs and potentially minimum order fees, you end up paying the same price, except it's harder to return to them. So generally speaking, I found it's not worth going to a supplier um, unless you're buying in, in, in quantity. Uh, the answer is the Gigabyte is more expensive by like 90p. Okay. Um, then the ASRock and then the MSIs are more expensive by like 50p. Okay, so they're almost identical. Yeah. but I, th I thought the swing was slightly bigger because yeah. I read the ASRock price from there. Oh, yeah, yeah, no. I take the I take the DS3H then, yeah. just because, as I say... For yeah. an extra pound, we have that one as well, which I just noticed. How does that change versus the Pro E? Yeah, I don't know. Which is Let's why I look just at that one. There. That looks the same as the B five sixty M A. That's a B five sixty M A Pro. Yeah, that's a B five sixty. That's the MA same picture, unless Pro I'm mistaken. Micro ATX. Is micro that the same ATX. board? Yeah. Yeah. How bizarre. How odd. Know. Yeah. Yep. Whatever. DS three H to victory. DS three H. And right. Yeah, um, but yes, uh, I shop at Amazon because in the UK it's generally the che yeah, they are at least the going rate for stuff. Um, I could probably save a couple of quid here and there by going to certain suppliers. Um, however, I'd be paying delivery costs, which I don't pay with Amazon. And also with Amazon, I can buy any time up to 9 p.m. and it shows up the next day. And also, I don't have to group my purchase together. You, what for the way my workflow works in the shop at during the day people will come in and they'll be like i need this i need this and i'll just buy stuff on amazon as and when i need it and it all just shows up together if i was buying from a supplier i'd have to wait until like the end of the day to try and group it all into one order and then i'd have to then send an email or sit down and do the purchasing and again maybe i might save a bit a, a couple of pounds here and there but for the amount of extra work it is to then actually do the purchasing, that is more hassle for me. And for me, uh, I need a minimum effort thing. I'm very lazy and I'm very busy. So I need something that is minimum effort and that's what Amazon gives me. And if there's ever a problem with anything, I just say to Amazon, I don't want it. And they give me my money back. Yeah. So it's it's that's the thing is... I would, you know, there are other suppliers that would potentially give slightly better prices, but Amazon offers so much convenience that it doesn't make sense for me not to use them, in short. Yeah, so, yeah. it's often a case using eBay, uh, as Chris says. Yeah, same with eBay, yeah. Tech retailers on eBay can often be the cheapest. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I same. found that. Um, I was looking at Scan. Scan's eBay shop was mm. cheaper by like three or four pounds than their website. Yeah. Cause this, uh, but on their website, I then had to pay ten pound delivery on top of that. Yeah, this is what. This but is through what, eBay, it was cheaper list price yeah. and free delivery. I was yeah, like, what? The, this happens when I'm buying LCD panels. Every time I'm buying LCD panels for laptops, I open up the packaging and there's a big old bit of A4 paper on the front saying you could get be getting it cheaper from our website, and I and it's like you know get from our website, save money, and etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. And then I look on their website and I'm like, but it's the same price, except I have to pay another £10 for delivery. Yeah. So it's not cheaper. Or like, it's £1 less, but then it's £10 delivery. And I'm like, you're, you're telling me it's cheaper, but it's not. And it's also more hassle because now I have to create a purchase order with you yeah. instead of just clicking buy it now on eBay. Yeah. And I'm just like, this is the thing for small you'd suppliers. Have to buy, you'd have to be buying a minimum of 11 of them kind of thing in one go. Yeah, again. For any anything yeah. starts making sense if you're buying in bulk absolutely but when you're buying yeah. in ones and twos it doesn't it just doesn't work yeah yeah but this this one the antec mm. nx 410 yes that's the one that that's um, the one i was Chris thinking used, of um and i actually saw in person oh right yeah and that does I look to really say, nice it's really quite nice yeah that looks very nice i have and I don't think this I've seen detaches that 
as well, which makes yeah, I'm a fan on of that. the swingy door, which yeah. instantly looks fancy. Yeah, I'm a big fan of swinging door uh, glass panels. See. Um, yeah, that's CCL really nice. have it for fifty quid. Fifty quid. Yo, that's really good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, sorry, Bit Fenix, you're not my darling anymore. Yeah, I'm into it. Yeah, I'm yeah. into it. I like it a lot. Yeah. Yeah, we'll have to ch- we'll, we'll check what the Amazon price for that is as well, or or on eBay either or, yeah, just to see how it. accessible it the is. Bats. Yeah, that's what it was. Yeah, yeah, the black one is a smidgen cheaper than the white one. Yeah, apparently right now. But um, yeah, there you go. Those <clears throat> are the two prices. Uh, cool. So four thirty one and four thirty seven. Hey, not bad. So what's the difference between these two builds then? Is it just the CPU? That's an to eleven. In, that's an eleven four hundred F. Yeah. With the B five sixty M. Yeah. And this is a twelve one hundred F yeah. with a B six sixty M. So it really was just um, cheaper CPU but more expensive motherboard. And yeah. the CPUs both trade blows in benchmarks. We've seen that. Yeah. With you know arguably the twelve eleven hundred coming out slightly ahead because it's very much a case of the eleven four hundred F wins, but the uh, sorry the the i three 12100 it wins overall however it has a bloody nose from the i5 yeah absolutely so yeah you could take either and get comparable performance so in which case selling the newer the newer platform would be the sensible purchase because then you can say it's 12th gen it's current generation so that makes it more attractive yeah but and also the other thing as well is that it, we still had to go for that B560M. The DS3H, I like that motherboard, but it's still it's not an interesting motherboard. Mm. If we if we'd managed to squeeze in a exotic motherboard that had nice VRM heat sinks and maybe a bit of RGB on it or something like that, I would probably be leaning toward the i5 as a better presented computer. Mm-hmm. However, we still had to go with a poor man's motherboard in order to get the price down. So, well, we didn't have to, but it was a case of certainly, obviously, to try and get price parity. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which was basically kind of, I think, the point. But it's very interesting that the two are very similar in total system cost mm. and very similar in performance. So yeah. way, it doesn't. So what were those bottom lines it. again? Uh, this one was. Uh, uh, so four thirty four thirty one, and this is four thirty seven. Four thirty seven. So yeah, the i three actually came in ever so slightly cheaper. Yeah. Um, so yeah. Uh, however, that those are so close that they may as well be the same price. So yeah. yeah. Absolutely. However, oh, this is no graphics card as well, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so while we're six hundred and yeah. Okay. So however, this tells us that for our Intel build, I vote we go with the. Uh, I vote we go with the i3 just because yeah. it's 12th gen. Yeah, absolutely. So we've answered the question I of should you build with an with an 11th gen i5 or a 12th gen i3, go with the i3. I think what we should do is look at what do we think is an exciting motherboard for this. Yeah. And so, just see how much do we th- yeah. are we going to have to pay for that. So far, we're doing pretty good on price. Um, you know, like we're we're still sub five hundred pounds oh, wow. pre graphics card. Six ninety for less than two hundred pound. It's a it's a UD. However, oh, still it's... that's a flagship chipset, which obviously means later on down the line you can drop in a nicer CPU with no problems. Um, that looks shockingly not absolute garbage. Yeah. I mean, well, it's a Z690. It's not going to be terrible. Yeah, yeah. but, well, I don't know. I just kind well, of expected, yeah, no. like, the... I mean, looking the, a bit closer, like the, the audio's crap. Um, yeah, but, but at the I, same time, cares? but at the same time, yeah. unless you're building a £3,000 computer, you're not going to have good enough headphones. Yes. Uh, sorry, I'll rephrase that. The audio looks crap, so we're beginning to see where they're cutting corners. Yeah. However, does any of it matter? Probably not. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So, um, what's going on with that white PCI Express slot? I guess that's just aesthetic, isn't it? it also cool. just denotes that PCI Express 5. Oh, yes, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that looks pretty nice. I really quite like that. Yeah, that's a very sensible looking motherboard, isn't it? Um, and what did you oh, say you... the price on that was? 167 Yeah. Yeah, so that is... We've got the Phantom Gaming as well. What's the price on our current motherboard again, sorry? E- 117 no or something. No idea. Not a clue. 
Not a Scooby. 117. Yep. Yeah. Hun- Sorry, 115. 115. So 115. So, uh, and what was that? Z- so it's about 50 quid. It's yeah, about so 50 quid plus more. 50 quid more, and we get a Z690 motherboard. Um, so what about a nice B-series? What does a nice B-series look like? An actually nice uh, nice one. And if we've already scrolled past the Z690, we've already lost. Maybe here? Yeah. Maybe that? And the other ones are all just... What about all of the... Um, yeah, these are... What's above here? Hold what's on. between... Like, Two seconds. This is what we're getting for slightly more money on the B660 front. Yeah. That looks worse. Yeah, also it's micro. Well, are we on a micro board at the moment? Yeah. Okay, fine. Yeah. But, uh, that's tolerable uh, for, for rock bottom price. But yeah, that's I was sorry, I was comparing yeah. to that, yeah. to yeah. that. Yeah, okay, so what's above this? Because don't forget, once we hit £167 and we can afford the Z690, everything below that is now completely irrelevant. So our, our choices have now been narrowed down to those five boards. Are any of them actually any good? So... B yeah, so B six sixty M. So that That's looks a nice. Horrid picture as well, though, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Come on there. Rear I/O looks a bit thing. Oh, also, did I miss? Oh no, I didn't. No, That's fine. Um. So yes, uh, Christopher David, thank you for the twenty dollars. Nice live stream. Thanks a lot, my man. I'm glad you're enjoying the show. Oh, there we go. That's a better picture. Oh yeah, there we go. Uh, that's got good USBs on the back. Uh, like the oh no, that's no, it doesn't. Oh no, God, they're all they're all HDMI. Why has it got dual HDMI? What? Dual HDMI, dual display port. Well, that's... What? Like, it's, it's titled as a pro. This is obviously intended for office use where you're going to have two screens hooked up to an office box, isn't it? Shh. That's their game here, isn't it? I guess. It's, for oh. dual, it's a dual screen office box. Do you know box. the thing that's still depressing about the onboard um, graphics, yeah. even on 12th gen? Yeah. It doesn't support HDMI 2.1, but the... Uh, it doesn't support full HDMI 2.1, but the motherboards are HDMI 2.1. So the graphics card doesn't support it, but the motherboards do. Oh. And I'm like, oh, yeah. still. But then, yeah, but then arguably, what are you doing on a, on a system like that that requires 2.1? Having two 4K screens. Say. Sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, like again, uh, most people will be like, "Oh, you're you're not going to do 4K on this." Yeah, but what if you're if you have a home office and you're, you're an accountant and you have spreadsheets on um, you want 4K oh boy, spreadsheets. Yeah, exactly. All the spreadsheets. That's right. You want two 4K screens with spreadsheets at high DPI so you can read that text really well. And that's also, so why you, can you have want them at like sixty percent size. Yeah. That's why you want dual 4K screens on that motherboard. So, yeah, fair enough. Uh, yeah. Okay. Either way, I, this motherboard is not for us, I don't think. It is not better. No. It's an interesting board, but it's not for us. Okay, uh, go back to the list. Uh, uh, here is the ASRock option. Ew. Wow. Gross. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> Goodbye, ASRock. Asrock, more like Asrock. What? <laughs> yeah, no. What? Do better. Yeah. Please do better. No, no. That's shocking. Sorry, what did Chris say? By the way, before everyone lambasts me about mocking Asrock, I run an Asrock Tai Chi at home. I also think that the Asrock Pro Gaming 4 yeah. was the best B450 motherboard. They have some cool motherboards. However, they're a mixed bag. So, yeah. yes. Anyway, moving Hold on. on. Uh, what did Chris say? Chris says, H670 has much more max PCIe lanes than B660. Which is higher, H or B? I thought B was higher. Oh, I don't no. know. H is the mid-range for Intel, isn't it? Yeah, but look at but the, the price difference. Thing. Yeah. Um, it was purely a case yeah. of the price difference. Thing. Yeah, that's true. Um, okay, yeah. Um, right. Let's see how much we have to go to get another... Uh, Z690, there we go, which is another £10. Yeah. Does this give us anything for our £10 over that gigabyte board? Honestly, oh, It gives us fancy um, oh. silk screening. That's kind of nice silk screening. It's yeah. okay. The RGB around the chipset is forgettable. Chipset RGB looks really nice when there's no graphics card. As soon as you put in a graphics yeah. card, you can't see it. Yeah. 
which is a which is a shame because again like this is the problem i've got with my asrock uh tai chi at home it's a really really pretty motherboard that you can't see by the time everything's in there uh i think we should put the gigabyte z690 in there i want to look at the usbs on this one yeah oh hi can i have some usb please oh on your quote-unquote pro motherboard yeah. What? what? Well, this is the annoying thing. Pro means designed for an office, not professional workstation. That's that. This frustrate. And don't get me wrong. That's not what it should be. Pro uh, should mean workstation. Ah, uh, yes, because but, I have yeah. unfavorable signal flow because of <laughs> because of the <laughs> because of my PCIe slots. Absolutely. <laughs> I can't, I can't have that orange line. I've got to have that nice ice blue line. I just love the unfavorable. It's just like, <laughs> I hate it when my signal flow is unfavorable. Yeah. <laughs> 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 oh, well. Oh, dear. Um, I quite like that. I, I really quite like that gigabyte board, though. I think that gigabyte board is actually pretty good bang for buck. That's, I mean... Do you just want to? Is that like? Just look that up on Amazon or something. Just like, is that just an outlier price? That might be like a special offer from that one shop that has it. Uh, yeah, it is. Yeah, roughly. everyone else is like one eighty. Um, yeah. Let's put that in there. But I think this is something that this is probably going to change again when we hit to the, when we get to the checkout. Because again, we're going to be. It's still free next day delivery. Oh wow! Okay, free next day delivery. Sure. Have you found the lower price? Ah, interesting. Damn. Well, that's cool. That's not bad. All right. Uh, tell you what. Yeah. You know, because they do free delivery, I will accept it. I don't like buying from multiple places, but if they've yeah. got free delivery, Box does free delivery as well. Yep. A lot of the times, so yeah. Yeah, all right, fair enough. Okay, let's put that on the list then. Um, so we're paying an extra 50 quid, but we're going from a really dull motherboard to a, that's actually a, a nice motherboard and will allow you to upgrade in the future. It just seems really weird pairing it with an i3. Yes, I 100% agree. But the alternative is the boring motherboard. So yeah, I, I, th I think it's worth putting... This this is where we get into this is where that horrible phrase comes up, future proofing. I think that's a va I think that's valid future proofing. Yeah. But then on the question is, if we're going to spend an extra fifty quid, what would an extra fifty quid get us on the CPU? Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. Mm. But that's the way you start going. Oh, another fifty pound here. Or oh yeah, fifty pound here. To, to be true, yeah. Well, that much being said, it doesn't actually get us. Uh, it could get us up to a twelve four hundred. Where no, it doesn't get us to a twelve no. four hundred because that's one hundred seventy three. Yeah. So yeah, that doesn't work. So yeah, actually, I think that's I think that's a I think that's a good place to put the money um, because it means that the uh, yes we are under specking the CPU, mm. but it means that you can drop a bigger CPU in there later on down the line, and it is a thing. It does happen. So yeah. Yeah. What about the gaming chair for this setup? Yeah. Oh yeah, the actual budget is three thousand pounds, but we've got to spend two and a half grand on a secret lab plush leather RGB gaming chair with a magnetic cushion. <laughs> um, tech next day is fine. Wait, Haven't had issues. Fair enough. What are you spotted? Twelve six hundred non K. There are more cores on the KF. On oh, the yeah. K and the KF. I, I, really? They're not mixing are up they? the performance and efficiency cores I or something, are they? But That's the problem. They might be miscounting cores there. Wait, what? There's a 12500. Yeah, that 12500 is a weird one. That might be an OEM designed chip. It might be possible to buy it from somewhere, but it's intended for OEMs or something. How bizarre. Oh, it's. I think it's the. The cheap way of getting the seven seven the seven seventy. Oh yeah, it has slightly it's, better it's graphics. It's like the ten. It's like the ten five hundred or something was a really weird one to get the upgraded UHD. Yeah. Graphics. Yeah. So yeah. slightly better integrated graphics. So again, though, 
I, I don't understand why anyone cares. Integrated is integrated. It's not gaming graphics. So, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Okay. Anyway, right. So we're putting in the we're putting in the bigger motherboard. So I think we need to talk about graphics cards. Let's see. If we want to buy a graphics card now, what can we actually buy? GT seven ten. Done. Sold. Yeah. Ugh. All right. So, sixteen fifty. Sixteen fifty super for one hundred and sixty two pound. What really? Really? Oh, that's a sixteen fifty, not a sixty. Yeah. What's the performance like on the sixteen fifty super? Interesting. What does the sixteen fifty super compare to in terms of, say, a ten ten series card? Like, can it? Do, can the sixteen fifty super? Go toe to toe with a ten sixty six gig, for example. I don't know. Uh, to gamers da, Nexus da, 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 because they've got all the charts. Da, 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 da. Ba, ba, ba. Um. Anyway. Um. YouTube gamers um, Nexus sixteen fifty super. Oops, that's a f- thirty seventy for seven fifty to eight hundred pounds. Yes, however, that's more than the entire computer budget at the moment. Damn you! Okay, okay right. So, so where's this uh, ten? It's better. Th- oh, it's better, better than a ten sixty six gig. Yeah, and it comes in just shy of the ten seventy. All right, other games. That's not bad. And same deal, a bit above the ten sixty. Oh, considerably lower than the ten seventy there. So yeah, it does fall between the ten sixty and the ten seventy, doesn't it? And the sixteen sixty vanilla is beating it out. However, I'd imagine that the sixteen sixty vanilla is horridly overpriced at the moment. Yeah, the 1060 is faster than it in Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon World. Although Islands. that's by a margin of error almost, isn't it? So, oh, same, oh, same there. It's for honor, the there. three gig is. Yeah, that's extreme quality. This is also above 60 FPS at 1080p. Yeah. So that's not. Arguably doesn't really matter. It's not atrocious. Yet. Yeah. Uh, s- this is competitive, s- this thing, isn't it? Yeah, shockingly so. Yeah, I, I thought didn't... I thought these were massively crapper than they were. Yeah, it's actually big. Be. Same. So, bearing in mind that a second-hand ten sixty six gig is going to cost you around you know a hundred, hundred and a hundred forty, hundred and fifty quid kind of thing, yeah. right? That's correct, isn't it, Chris? S. You, a deal, a good priced ten sixty is going to be like one hundred ten or something, but. Um, yeah. Oh my god. You won't find a 1650S anywhere. Okay. Does, does anyone yeah. actually have them? Because we've got prices there, but do they actually have one? That's the question. Uh, by virtue of the fact that it was listed with a price, I assume they have one. Oh, it's AWD, isn't it? 1650. Yeah, this seems to be a bit of a stealth card. I didn't know that this thing was a thing. And our survey says... Out of stock, uh-uh. out of stock, out of stock. Out of stock, out of stock, out of stock. Out of stock, out of stock, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, that's what I was assuming. That is entirely what I was assuming. Wah, 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 wah. Yeah, never mind. Yeah, absolutely. Fine, okay. Uh, previous question then, what is in stock? Yeah. Uh, while you have a look, I'm going to quickly use the bathroom. I will Fair return enough. momentarily, and then I'm going to break open my cider, I think. That's the issue with looking at this, though, is obviously lots of websites they effectively list, effectively list. lie about what they have in stock. Yeah. Which is obviously a problem. I will be amazed if this 10 uh, um, fight, yeah, AWD, AWD again. Can you remove a store without signing in? No, not easily. Ha! <laughs> 
<laughs> a GTX 550 Ti for 195 quid. No. Dee 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 dee. There you go. You are in stock on Amazon. Interesting. What are you? Ah, oh, you're a 1050 Ti for £260! Try again. <laughs> <laughs> Try again. I like how, though, it says £180 there. Then you go through 260. Oh, all right. Okay. Nope. Ah. I think we might have to actually just look up, rather than PC Part Picker, we might just have to look at um, known shops just to see who actually have stuff. 1660 for 340 quid. No. Uh, 6600 XT, man. It's your best bet for a new graphics card right now, I 230 think. 230 quid. Uh, no. Mm. I think the answer is no, basically. We're just going to have to look at a shop. Yeah. E-buy. Whoops. Yeah. So, E-buy. as a reminder of the rules, Scan. Um, second hand Box. is... Um, we're buying new, however, for the graphics card, second hand is acceptable just because the market is such a wasteland right now that it's m- almost your only option. So, yeah, we w- uh, if we can't see anything that actually looks like a sensible buy, then we will go for second hand. I want a new one if I can, but if we can't find anything where we're just like, that's, you know, that, that's pretty good then second hand will be the next option. Um, no, 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 no. Ooh, what's that? 1050 TIs. Oh. Uh, no. No, because you can get second hand 1060s at that price, which will spank them. Well, for less than that point, you know. That's the thing is just, yeah. Because that, that's the problem, is you can find a... I'm going to double-check this, but you can find 1066 gigs for about... Uh, Chris, I asked you this earlier, Ron. What's the going rate for a 1066 gig right now? 120, around that kind of money? 120? Yeah, or for 200. A, for a or is it 220, I was thinking? No, I'm... I'm what planet are you on? I'm thinking, I think you mean 200. Yeah, I think I've got a... I think I'm 100 out, yeah. I'll wait for Chris to confirm. I think it was 200 is what the number I was looking 16 for. 1660 Super, 400 pounds. Hmm. No. That's what we're looking at. Yeah. It's basically everything on there. I'm going to start checking eBay in the meantime. Ah! Uh, 1066 gears for 180 easily. Yeah, okay, there we go then. Yeah. Yeah. So 180. So this is the thing we've got to keep in mind. So while we want to get one that's new, uh, we have to keep in mind that we could probably pick up a second-hand 1066 gig for around about £200 at least, or, you know, £200 or better. So whatever we buy, it needs to be it needs to be a better option than a second-hand 1060. You know, so, like, when we see 1050 Ti's at, two, at £240, it's like, no, I'm just going to buy a 1066 gig second-hand. So... Um, so yes, 160 with ha- haggling. Yeah, there you go then. So, right, uh, 6600 for 70. Yeah, it's also worth bearing in mind. I've got two 6600 XTs in stock right now. Oh yeah, we don't um, actually need graphics cards. For yeah, this. so um, we can we can pretend. That one is available for purchase at approximately four hundred. Um, it's cheating for the purposes of the for, for the purposes of the stream. However, that's just because I was in the right place at the right time. And yeah, we, we're kind of trying to assume that we're buying this now. 
However, the fact remains is that if you're building for if you're professional if you're a professional building, yeah. If you're a professional <laughs> if you're a professional builder, you're buying parts as and when you see deals, not in the moment. So yeah, there is nothing on either side here. Wait, they made a 6800 6800 XT Liquid Devil. But why? <laughs> yeah. No. All right, there so is yeah. Nothing. There is nothing, yeah. And um, eBuyer are pretty good. If eBuyer don't have anything, really? I think Really? There's a friggin' Strix LCOC 6800 XT. Why? If if we're not seeing anything on eBuyer, we're not probably going to we're probably not going to find anything anywhere else either, are we? No. So with that being the case, our options are secondhand. So, um, considering, ugh, so at that point we need to decide what the budget is for this computer. Are we gonna? Would we potentially match it with a sixty six hundred XT, or are we gonna say what else? Let's say we want to put in something that's a bit better than a ten sixty six gig. What is the next option up from that? What's the going rate for a secondhand, say ten seventy? I wonder. I'm going to check eBay. Um, GTX 1070. Uh, let's see. Uh, I want sold. 1660 for 389. Ugh, no. 1650 super for not at all. Show sold items, there we go. 1650 non super for 260. Oh my god, stop zooming. Buy it now. Ten seventy. Oh, ten seventies exist at sub two hundred pounds. I'll read description. That means it's broken. <laughs> so, how ten seventies are approximately two hundred pounds if you pick up a deal. Interesting. Yeah, that's a very very competitive because the ten seventy is still a competitive card. Scan have no thirty nineties. All 3080 Ti's. Yeah. yeah. 250-ish buy it now is a common. So a second... I think a second-hand 1070 is probably... Because, like... Oh. I did say as cheap as we can go, but... What's that? Trinity... What? 3070 for a grand? Yeah. GTFO. <laughs> yeah. All right, so we need to we need to consider what our budget is then. So we're at what four four thirty is our current budget, uh, or sorry, four thirty is where we're up to. Yeah, so four hundred thirty pounds is what we've currently spent. Um, so if we spent two hundred on a graphics card, we would be at six hundred thirty pounds, and we yeah. were originally look we were originally looking at six hundred to eight hundred. So we could we could be going sort of six hundred thirty pounds cost price. So let's say we're going to sell that at 700 because um, we want to make money on this as well. So 630 costs 700 sell minimum. Um, then what if we... So if we wanted to put in the 6600 XT, that would be adding another 200 pounds. So we'd be looking at 830 cost and more like 950 or a grand sell, which puts us out of budget but then if someone said i want a decent graphics card we could then say yes but that puts you up to a grand so yeah 1070 is too old not a reliable system what would you go for there and adam williams because that's the thing i agree with you i don't really want to be putting 10 series graphics cards in new in new computers either but what else that's the problem everything's out of stock what else do you buy so what about second-hand AMD cards? What do you get in the second-hand market for AMDs? Like, uh, Probably like cool, 50, because they're 50... really good for mining. Oh, yeah. Yeah, okay, yeah. That's a good point. Uh, 2060s? Yeah, what's, this, what's the going rate for a 2060? That's a good point, actually. 2060 is a, that, 2060 is a, val is a valid answer. Um, RTX 2060. These are not alike. Can you, can you see what the difference is between these products... 
and this product. <laughs> <laughs> that is not a graphics card, sir. Oh my god! Oh my word. An RX five eighty for three hundred and seventy quid. No, God, someone bought someone bought on eBay a twenty sixty six gig for two hundred pounds. They got a bloody bargain there. I th I thought for a second it had like forty dollars of shipping on it. Yeah, and I was like, oh, that kind of makes yeah. sense. Okay, twenty sixties are about three hundred, three hundred, three fifty, yeah. three hundred, three fifty, that kind of area. That's a compelling offer, actually, because so we're we're at four thirty, so four thirty um, plus three hundred um, puts us at seven thirty. Oh. So we could be going for an eight hundred and fifty pound sale price there, and have just over a hundred quid profit. Yeah. Or we could just go eight thirty and have a hundred pound profit. Yeah. Uh, that's assuming we get the the twenty sixty for three hundred though, which is pushing it. So actually, eight fifty is probably a safer bet, assuming that we're going to pay yeah. three hundred plus change. Four hundred and fifty quid for a sixteen sixty Ti. Yeah, and like. So, 300-ish pounds for a 2060 is probably pretty good bang for buck there. Although, that much being said, the 2060 is not that much faster than a 1070. And we're looking at paying another 100 pounds for it. So, the 1070 is actually better bang for buck. Potentially by a significant amount as well. What do you, like, what do you, what's your opinion there? Because, like... The, the the 2060 is it's slightly faster than a 1070 however we're looking at paying another 100 pounds for a 2060 are we going to pay another 100 pounds just for it to be a 20 series instead of a 10 series how much is a 2060 super so if it's 2060 super it's like 350 as well. I'm looking at uh, vanillas here. Yeah, um, that's what I'm saying. If going up to yeah. a super is like five pound more because yeah, okay. people are being weird. 2060 super. I'm looking on eBay. 350 um, for 400. Oh yeah, 350. So looking... Or 350 for a bargain. 400 realistically. Yeah, 400. And 450. Up. Yeah, yeah. now we're, we're out of budget now. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, I think the 1070 is a better option. It's an older card, but it's better. It's an it's an older meme, sir. But. Mm. 1660 Super, you'll never find one at a good price. 1660 Super, I sold a 1660 Ti last week for £400. So, yeah. Nah. The, 16, the 1660 Super and Ti cards are massively inflated at the moment. It's the one that everyone wants. Whereas the 1070, that's the stealth card that is almost as fast, but half the cost. So, yeah. How much is the price difference between the two? Because the performance difference is... See, that performance difference is fairly significant. That is not what I've seen on videos. Mm. Like, if you do a Google search for... If you do a YouTube search for 10, 2060 versus 1070, you do not see those results in the videos that they are showing. Um, I, I, I think... Like, I mean, we're talking about sort of maybe 10 to 15 FPS difference. Yeah, and also these there's a lot so. of synthetics in there as well. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. No, there is. Yeah. But just a case of... Mm. You're still talking 10 to 15 FPS. Yeah, okay. So, so how much is 10 to 15 FPS worth? Yeah. Is 10 to 15 FPS worth another £100 plus change? I don't think so. I'd pay another 60 to or 70 quid. But I think I think not answering your question mm. it depends on where you're already buying because a hundred pound more when you're already buying an eight hundred pound graphics card for fifteen FPS more, yes. Oh yeah, yeah. When you're buying a two hundred pound graphics card, no. Yeah. So yeah. Yeah. Mm. So yeah. Um so yes. Um, it depends. I guess it also depends on what they're using the computer for. Because if they're like, I am starting to stream on Twitch or something like that, yeah, possibly going for the 2060 is better because newer NVENC. Newer NVENC. Yeah. So it's Although, possibly. So the value proposition is actually the NVENC. 
potentially over yeah. the actual FPS game. Although I would argue, so yeah. Although I would argue that again, considering considering we're extremely price constrained in our decision here, mm. I would va- I would argue that as someone who owned and streamed on a 1070 for for a few years. Um, I, from personal experience, I can say the 1070 is a great graphics card and is oh, yeah. great at streaming. So at that point, I would be like, yeah, the 2060 does have a newer NVENC in it, but the 1070's one is fine. Oh, yeah, absolutely. But so, just yeah. a case of something to consider. Th- that yeah. consideration to put to the client who's purchasing yeah. it for their decision. Do you want to pay more money mm. for a card that isn't worth it in, in raw gaming performance faster, yeah. but is slightly better encoder, yeah. slightly faster in gaming, do you want to spend that extra money? Yeah. My recommendation is no, but the offer is there. And yeah. I think that's the way I'd say. Mm. Uh, RTX Broadcast as well, that is another thing that it will have. So yeah. again, on its own, I think RTX Broadcast is a bit of a gimmick and is not really necessary. However, again, if we're talking about part of a package, you've got newer you've got newer nvenc and rtx broadcast when you start adding all of these little things together that does build up to a larger value proposition i think also each one on its own i don't think is worth it but if you start adding them up i would agree i think it also depends on where you're selling it if you're selling the product in a listing and trying Mm. to get someone to click on your one to buy it the 2060 is the better option i think if someone's walked into your shop and said i want you to sell me a computer yeah you've already won so you're building them the best value option. Yes, I agree. And Where also, is and also in the shop, I can say to people, you know, I can explain to people what the spec of it is. And I can say, this has a 1017 in it, which is a second-hand card, and we've chosen it because it is the best value proposition. And I can explain the context of why it has that card in it. Whereas when you're just looking, when you're competing in the listings on eBay, Facebook Marketplace, and so on, yeah, you, you need whatever is the the best bling. So, yeah. Uh, as an aside, uh, Firefone, is FlexBV much better than OpenBV? Uh, does it support for more formats? Um, I believe it has more formats, although most of the formats that I care about is just BRD anyway. Um, however, um, the main thing is that uh. it is significantly nicer to look at and browse around. Um, the graphics, uh. the graphics, yeah, the graphical view is easier to look at and easier to read, and it's it's slicker. The the shortcuts work better. It's less clunky. Um, and it has more cross, um, it has more cross-linked information in it, which makes it easier to get to what you're trying to discover. Um, so it is a slight improvement. If you're working on a budget of zero, then Open Board View is better value for money because it's free. However, um, it's uh, Flex Board View is really good. Uh, I do like it, and yeah. Uh, for those of you who haven't seen Lace's video on the main channel, um, Paul Daniels, who made a uh, flex board view, is doing a giveaway of five licenses at the end of the month. So if you're possibly interested, go and check that out. It's Lace's video on the channel gives you more information. Uh... Interesting, just aside, we're saying about the upgrade yep. to the 2060 Super. Yeah. To get to a 2060 Super with AWDIT, mm. they've dropped to a nine, uh, an i7 9700F. Mm to stick that in for less than a grand. Yeah. So you're having to go three generations back yeah. on the rest of it. And I mean, like, that's still fine. Mm. That's still a good computer. Um, and, like, for less... That spec, for less than a grand, uh, in a good-looking case, that's a fairly good-looking computer, isn't it? Oh, that's excluding... T- oh, no, sorry. Yeah, I saw... Ex- yeah. Yeah, that's a good-looking computer, I think. Mm. Um so, but just a case of the comparison for them yes, to agree. for them to fit that in there, yeah. they've dropped so back to that. So how does the i3 fare versus a a, a 9700F? Let's go. Uh, can you bring up the um, the the Gamers Nexus review of the 12100 again? I want to see if it destroys a 9, 9700F because if it does, that will be hysterical. Quite frankly. Uh. Whereas if it gets trounced, then an older i7 might potentially be better. Hi, Steve. <laughs> Back to you, Steve. Right, so... Have we got a 9700F on that? No, but list? we've got a 9900. 
which is slightly faster. Yeah, and only one notch above it on the chart. So what we need to do now is do the... Uh, 9900K. Gamers yeah. Nexus. 9700K. Do, do, do. Oh. oh, that's a big chart. Let's see. It is... What's the percentage scaling we're looking at? Uh, 5%. It's less than 5%. Oh, wow. They're very close that. together. Yeah. So, so that 9700K that. is slightly faster then, but obviously it's also an up. It's also an upgrade dead end. Yeah. So, um, so the AW, AWD's computer... So we're... We're in terms of a value proposition, we're looking to sell for about eight fifty. Um, so we're looking at realist like after delivery, um, we're looking at a hundred approximately one hundred and fifty pounds, one hundred to one hundred and fifty pounds less than AWD's twenty sixty system, uh, at, with something that has comparable performance. Um, uh, well, sorry, for something that has a comparable CPU in it. You're paying 150 pound less, and like if we spent another hundred pounds on our graphics card, we could get up to a 2060 as well. Um, so we're offering the same kind of value as what AWD are building, except our one has um, uh, upgradable headroom on it, whereas AWD's one with that 9700K is essentially a dead end. So yeah. from that perspective, that kind of confirms that what we're offering here. Uh, is actually a fairly compelling. That's that's a fairly compelling offer, in my opinion. Yeah. Hmm. And it's nine seven hundred F, not a K. Yeah. I mean, oh yeah. Well, so is ours, but, but I yeah. was I was comparing favorably for the nine thousand yeah. series. Yeah. Because I was comparing the faster CPU to get a percentage scale. Yeah. And the twelve one hundred F is probably fractionally faster than the ninety seven hundred. Yes. F. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So what we've built there, I think that's I think that's pretty good going. I think that I'd want to go through all of the H H six seventy or whatever the hell they are, whatever the chipset below the Z six ninety is. Yeah. Literally all of them, irrespective of price, and go. Is this a nicer motherboard? Is this a nicer motherboard? Is this a nicer motherboard? Mm. Um, to then go, right, if I spend £2 more or £9 more yeah. on an H670, do I get more USB? Do I get more usable PCI Express? See, I think the answer to that is going to be no, because we um, we already have a Z, a Z series chipset. Yeah. So anything that is a lower chipset, automatic, like if we were comparing the, to the same chipset, we might be able to find something that's slightly better. But as soon as you go up to the next step up in chipset, uh, and again, this is uh, if you had a really, really garbage Z series motherboard because they they do exist, they're out there. Like for example, you can buy you can buy X five seventy motherboards that have like two USBs on the back, kind of thing. Yeah. For for reasons unknown, they exist. Yeah. Um, so if we ha if we were looking at one of those, then yes, we might find a better lower chipset motherboard. But that's what I'm saying. I just want to, I'd want to do before buying that board. Yeah. I just want to quickly go through and double check all of that. Yeah. Um, so um, that's fine. Mm. I just want to do that. Yeah. Um, fair enough. So um, okay, so that's an option. I think the other thing we should do as well. Um, well, I was about to say we should we should do an A and D build as well. However, the A and D build is basically this plus a hundred pounds, isn't it? Because the uh, um, uh, because the fifty six hundred X is more or less as low as we can go, or fifty six hundred G. Yeah, how much? Um, also, people who are asking about VAT and stuff. Uh, so basically, in order to in order to claim back tax, you need to be VAT Oops. registered. And if I was a VAT, I'm not VAT registered. If I was VAT registered, I would buy at these prices, which include VAT. Then I would claim back the VAT, and I would get the tax back. If I was keeping the computer as a company asset, that would be the end of it. So I just get it cheaper. However, if I'm VAT registered, when I sell something. 
I have to sell it with VAT on top that the tax man will take. So I won't pay, although I won't pay VAT on the purchase, I will then have to charge VAT on the sale, which means I have to then swallow the tax or add the tax on top. One way or the other, the tax will be paid. Um, so it actually makes zero difference to me as someone who is selling the computer. If I was keeping it as a company asset, then I would want to be VAT registered and claim back the VAT. But because I'm selling it, I will end up having to put the VAT back on top again anyway. So it ends up making no difference whatsoever. The, the question basically becomes, hmm. um, is this motherboard or this motherboard comparable yeah. to the um, Z690UD? In terms of like performance or... Because this is £100 less. This is mm. a B550M and it's £100 less. So the extra £100 in the CPU. That's that's the that's then the point because you can drop about a hundred pound on the motherboard because this is what did I just say sixty seventy something sixty nine seventy pound oh yes this is AMD we're looking at yeah. I was really confused there and I was like where the hell did this motherboard come from but yes this is AMD yeah, yeah. I, I looked at the socket and I was really really confused <laughs> <laughs> and I was like that's not that's not LGA um, okay yeah uh, yeah well it's it's not a. It's serviceable, so yeah. yeah. By dropping down to this motherboard, it would enable us to go AMD. Um, but what benefit does that then give? That's the question. Yeah. Is then the case so of it's what does pound, going AMD so give? It's a hundred pounds cheaper. Does that get us up to a fifty six hundred X? Yeah. Yeah. I think okay. so. So then, how does the fifty six hundred X compare versus the i three that we're looking at then? Uh, it's probably slower in game in in games. Yeah. But it's going to wreck it in literally everything else, isn't it? Well, I don't know. Actually, it's probably going to be comparable because again, twelfth gen is it's certainly, really it's certainly good. It's certainly, it will it will be better in stuff like Cinebench and Blender because they are yeah thread, thread and also spawning tar renderers. Yeah, it's also important to keep in mind. Um, and this is something that I mentioned again. I'm really sad that this video I did on this girl's computer that we were upgrading. I'm really sad that that's been shelved, because one important thing to remember is that we we looked at those benchmarks for gaming performance on the CPU. But what this doesn't take into account is the fact that you're never just running the game. You're also running Discord. You're also running Chrome in the background. You're also running probably a couple of other things in the background. It's never just the game. So if you've got a CPU that's really good at gaming, but bad at multitasking, having a good, strong multitasking CPU is still going to be faster in real life. I don't know, though, because it sounds like you're trying to justify a bulldozer now. Okay. Because when was the last time you sat at... When was the last time you sat at 33% CPU usage idling on Discord and Chrome? Because that's what you'd need to be to go from a 4-core to a 6-core. Yeah. When was okay. the last time so, you saw a computer that was so loaded with shite yeah. that it was idling at 33%? Mm, okay, yeah. So you'd need to be above that. So basically, so you're arguing that the background stuff is not a big enough footprint to matter. Well, yeah. You'd need to, you'd need to be idling at above 33% CPU usage. Yeah. For, to make the extra two cores and four threads relevant. Mm. Yeah. Um, hi, Noob Fixer. Firstly, no, you're wrong. The i3 is very good at gaming, because uh, we've been looking at the benchmarks. Um, secondly, uh, um, we did say at the start, and you weren't here, so I'll grant you on that one, the rules are, are brand new stuff only, except for the graphics card, because graphics card market is wrong. Um, so um so yeah uh, we're building we're building new because we're building a computer to sell in a front end shop so we yeah. kind of want it to have new parts in it graphics card we're making exceptions for though purely because um the graphics card market is a wreck anyway yeah for graphics cards you have to consider second hand first hand is you otherwise you lose so because it's a case of basically go hello your computer is 2000 pound there yeah and it much. has a 1660 ti in it yeah and uh, the budget is uh, the budget is as low as possible. We're looking for between six hundred and eight hundred pounds 
um, sale price, bearing in mind. And at the yeah. moment, we're kind of at eight fifty sale, which yeah. is we're just out of budget, but it's yeah. I'm kind of hoping that in a because in a minute, I think we should go to Amazon and try and and try and basket this. Um, and when we get to checkout, the price is either going to go slightly up or it's going to come down slightly. Um, and if it goes up, I think we're going to need to change something. But if it comes down, then we win. That's my uh, current Amazon case. do not have the 12100F in stock. Yeah. Amazon do not have mm. that in stock. And Just go AMD and put in the 6600 XT. The budget won't take the 6600 XT. And AMD like, don't have that in stock either. Yeah, so I'm, we'd have to pick different. Like, uh, so uh, a, again, to to uh, to recap, I have sixty six hundred XTs in stock, and I would put them in the computer, assuming that they cost four hundred pounds because I pay slightly less than that for them. Even though they cost, they're worth more than that. Mm. I would put them in at a budget of four hundred in the interest of selling a computer, but the budget won't take four hundred quid graphics cards. That's going to put us up to a grand, which puts us out of budget. Huh. You can um, you can get them as EU imports on Amazon, so that's not particularly an issue. Okay, yeah, sure. So, yeah, I'll right. take in I'll because, take it, in. because it's an Amazon EU import. Yeah. It doesn't matter. And like free delivery by Friday the twenty eighth, an EU import in le in less than a week. That's fine, man. And yeah. again, because it's Amazon, I don't have to bother with customs or anything. So sure. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. All right. Yeah, okay, so, so let's carry fine. on adding it and let's see what we can actually get the basket to. Uh, let's see. At the end of the day, do you want to sell a cheap computer that you don't trust or a capable gaming machine that you can trust and not come back to in 30 days? That's kind of it, really. Um, so, uh, so yeah, the Intel stuff is fine. I mean... I you have already purchased this three times. Yeah. I get what you're saying about the 1070 being old. Um I'm willing to roll those dice personally, but again, also I, I, but that's also just because I've got a lot of faith in the 1070 because I had one. I I I own a 1070 that was in my main rig for a couple of years, and it's currently sitting in the demo rig, and it, I think it's a great graphics card. I really like the 1070, um, so I'm a little I'm a bit of a 1070 fanboy, um, but I I think you could make a strong argument. Um, this is kind of like the when you're buying a second-hand car, how many miles has it got on the clock argument. You know, um, how much does mileage actually matter? You know, how much does a higher mileage actually increase the chances of failure? It's a really complicated discussion, I think. I'd agree an older graphics card is more likely to fail. That is undeniable. But... I don't think it's going to really make that much of a difference, personally. This is also assuming that when I buy a second-hand graphics card, I look at the picture, I look at what kind of card it is, what kind of computer it's probably been in. If you were to buy a 1070 that's clearly an OEM card and is sat in an OEM computer, it's probably been ragged and sat in a dust-filled computer all its life. But then on the flip side, if it's an OEM card, it probably hasn't done any mining either. But then on the other hand, there's a strong argument to be made that um, if a card has been doing mining, that doesn't make a measurable uh, difference either. So, I yeah, I don't think it makes a big difference, personally. I th you're going to roll the dice one way or the other. That's the thing. Mm. Uh, you go for bang on back budgets, unless you needed a 12100F. Yeah, see, the difference to a certain extent is... Um, I'm. I want to sell a computer in my shop, and I and say that it has a the latest i3 in it. Um, however, we've also established that I would have to go all the way. Like, you know, the the eleventh gen is not compelling. Neither's tenth. We'd have to go back several generations to get something that's at measurably cheaper and faster. SSD? So we'd have to go full second hand. SSD for going any older to matter. SSD? Hello? Hmm. I gather a 5600G APU without separate graphics card does not meet the graphics performance target. No. 
A the fifty seven hundred, the fifty six hundred G, the fifty six hundred G APU. Um, I would call it esports graphics. Um, so you know, it'll run your CS:GO, it'll run Fortnite, but it's not anything with a graphics card will destroy it. It'll get there we go. it'll get ruined by a real graphics card. Um, so yeah, for esports, it's doable. Any graphics card will actually destroy it, though. Do do do. You got a brand new X470 Gaming Plus Max motherboard that I can have. Uh, if you want to send it in, I would certainly find that useful. I would be greatly appreciative, and I'd certainly put it to use. So you know, um, like uh, it. It always feels very weird to say yes. I will take free stuff. However, yes, I will take free stuff if you want to send it to me. Um, uh, again, I would be incredibly grateful. Don't feel like you have to, though. If it's something that you can use or you can sell, then please use it or sell it. However, if genuinely you don't want it and you want to give it away, I will take it off your hands. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's kind of it's very difficult to accept freebies from the audience in this manner. However, if you want to, I'd be greatly appreciated. Always appreciated, never expected. Uh Let's see. Uh, the motherboard's not on Amazon. Motherboard's not on Amazon. Unfortunate. All right. So, what's our nearest equivalent then? This is the from point. Amazon. Fuck knows. Yeah, Amazon's really bad for motherboards. I don't know. I'm not sure I'd particularly bother. I'd just buy it from Tech Next Day. Oh yeah, because they had it, didn't they? Yeah, Tech Next Day yeah. had it with free delivery. Yeah, so sure. Does Box have it with free Next Day delivery as well? Sure. From from yeah, okay. If they've got it, then we'll do that. Then yeah. I'm I'm trying I'm trying to narrow it down. Basically, I'll take yeah. two stores. I just I really despise buying from three or four different places at the same time. But yeah, um, there you go. So yeah. So it'd be that. That's plus acceptable. That. Yep. And that's everything. Is it? So 330 plus, what was the board? 167. 330 plus 167. I have not, so that's, ah, that's 497. Yeah. So we've come in at 70 pounds over what we had on PC Part Picker. What happened? No. 483. Yeah. Oh. Because don't forget we upgraded the motherboard. Oh, yeah. Oh, of course we did. Yeah. I'm yeah. going insane. Yeah. That's unfortunate because I was calculating graphics with uh, the first price that we had. Uh, so okay, so let's let's say we're buying a ten seventy. Let's pretend that we get it for two twenty. Ah, five nineteen. Five nineteen minus five nineteen is indeed zero. Shush. <laughs> what? Undo. What are you doing? No, that's not what I meant to do. Right there we go. That's five nineteen. What are we missing? I don't know, but you just did 497 plus 22. Oh, 220 is what I meant. Okay, right. Clear. Four. Four. Nine. nine seven, seven. Plus two, two, zero equals 717. That's more like it. So plus a hundred pound profit, because I want at least a hundred pounds. Otherwise, there's no point in doing anything. Uh, and that's 817. Yeah. So yeah, so we're coming in. So uh, and that might creep up to 850 if the graphics card comes in over budget. So we're yeah. in budget, well, we're just a shade over at 850. Yeah. Um, however, we're in budget. We've got a we've got a decent it, we've got a pretty decent gaming computer with all new parts except the graphics card and we're coming yeah. in at just over 800 quid to the customer. Yeah. So, yeah, I think that's reasonable. I think that's reasonable. Um, yeah. So that's not bad. <clears throat> do do do. Um, let's see. Mm -mm. Although, also the case of obviously we can take off sort of forty, fifty quid, um, and drop the motherboard down. Sorry, say that again. We can take off like fifty pound from the price. Hmm. Um, by dropping the motherboard back down. Yeah. So, if it's a case of you want to get it done for eight hundred, not eight fifty. Yeah. It's a it's a simple motherboard swap. Yeah. It's not a complete refactor. Yeah. So yeah. yeah. The question is, this is a, this is basically if we like this spec, then as soon as we finish the stream today, I'm going to buy this. 
Yeah. Um, as I said, I'd want to actually more in depth compare the three the three cheap boards yeah, fair and enough. this. Yeah. Um, and actually go right. How many USBs? How many USBs? How many yeah. USBs? What type of USBs? Yeah. And then also give points plus or minus based on how much mm. I like the company. Yeah. Because and to a degree is, that factors in. Because if you yeah. can go through and go. Mm, a gigabyte board, brrr, yeah. BIOS configured. Done, That's the thing, and you save an hour. Yeah, because the the gigabyte, but the 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 gigabyte Z six ninety we've got there is overkill for the spec, but yeah. it introduces up an upgrade path. Um, and I think again, if you were if we were selling on eBay or marketplace, that would be a waste of money. Um, however, considering I'm going to I'm going to do a sales pitch to a customer about this computer and say it's got a really good motherboard in it, so you can drop in an i7 later on down the line and it'll be laughing. Yeah. Um, you know that's that's going to be part of the sales pitch for this computer. So in which case, I think that motherboard is worth going for. Like yeah. looking at that spec list, it's really easy to look at that and be like, an i3 and a Z690, you're mad. And it's like, yeah. well, actually, no. But it's also a sub two hundred pounds Z690. Yeah. So on that point, it's kind of not terrible. Um, but it is the case that yeah, yeah. before actually clicking the buy button. Yeah, you want to do a comparison. I, That's I, fine. Yeah. Because also, if it's a case of we suddenly go. Well, actually, that fifty quid doesn't get us anything. Yeah, that means the PC is that much more sellable. Yeah, agreed. So, yeah. Um, yeah. Let's see. Keep them budget, get them in the, the door. Utilize your storefront. Yeah. Yes, that's a good point. Actually, we can put in the low one, and I can say we've also got the sixty six hundred XT as an upgrade option if yeah. you want it. And yeah, I can. Uh, yeah, uh, and I, yeah. I can say this computer that's on the bench. We can also add in an i7 or a more bigger graphics card if you want that at the time of purchase. Yeah. Someone also asked what um, uh, what keyboard and mouse I would factor in. Uh, that would not be included in the uh, in the price as default. Um, however, I'd probably say um, uh, I'd probably throw in a bog standard Logitech keyboard and mouse set for about twenty pounds. Um, yeah, I'll probably I'll probably include that and add twenty quid onto the cost. Basically, is it? Um, the... We're looking at a hundred pound profit at the moment, which is tolerable to me. Um, for so, you know, like there are some people that are just like a hundred pounds. That's nothing, and I'm just like, well, a hundred pound profit to me is satisfactory because I'm building the rep for the shop at the same time. Selling computers in the shop isn't where I make my money. Um, oh, no. It's just a bonus. The 270 is the webcam. What's the keyboard and mouse bundle? Uh, K is the word you're looking for. I think it's... Uh, hang on a sec. It is... Uh, you want... Uh, oh, where's the keyboard and mouse bundle? I've got the keyboard here. Is it not on the desk? Oh, no, it's MK270 in. is the uh, wireless bundle. Ah, uh, that's why. MK270, £21.75. Sold. Yep. That's what I would supply with it. Now, Does that... Everything have thirty three percent off Xbox Game Pass for PC right now. <laughs> yeah, because that was on the on the um, power supply. I think it was on the RAM. It's yeah. It's like okay, I yeah. get the feeling that Amazon have far too damn many. Um, yeah. Now, I, for the record, I understand. Wait, um, I understand that the this <laughs> this keyboard and mouse. This is not a gaming keyboard and mouse. However. Um, this is a nice premium feel wireless keyboard and mouse set, so you can supply this with a computer, and the customer isn't going to take it out of the box and be like, "Oh, nice! I paid eight hundred quid for this kind of thing." They're going to take it out and go, "Oh, that's a nice keyboard. I want to get a gaming mouse for it, but this is a nice keyboard." You know, that that's the objective here. And like, you know, the the MK one wow. seventy there. Sorry, the MK120 there, that mouse will be better for gaming because it's a bigger mouse. The MK270, it's a pocket mouse, which is actually kind of horrible to game on. However, for the extra pound, they get wireless. So, yeah. Uh, yeah, what were you about to say? Purely a case of, oh, wow, it's a pound. Hmm. Yes, the MK270 is a really good bang for buck. Yeah. It did skyrocket in price during the pandemic. It went up to like 40 or 50 quid. And I was like, ha, ah, no. Um, however, uh, you know, around about the £20 marker, that's about price parity. Um, so, yeah. Um, yeah. 
Okay, so yeah, that's what I would buy with it. I think I've got a couple of these in stock because I keep those keyboard and mouse sets in stock, so we don't need to add that to the cart. But that's what I would buy, I think. Um, oh, it's also worth noting as well that we've got 57 pa 50, 58 pounds on the power supply right now. And from scan, it was 50, I yeah. think. And so I, that's where a couple I have, of a pound... Yeah. However, also, I've got Corsair power supplies in stock, which I'm selling at £50. So I'll save a little bit of money there. So there's my coupon bonus that I was talking about earlier on, where we're, all the, you know, we're pricing this up and saying this is the theoretical price. Actual price that I'm going to pay will come in slightly lower because I already have stock of cheaper power supplies than that. Yeah. And just to say that's what the... Um, that Antec case looks like built. Yeah, that's a nice looking case. There's a lot of headroom in that case yeah. as well. That'd take a top mount rad real nice. Yeah. Oh yes, the mean keyboard set, as Chris said. It is 100% cheese. It's not good. Oh no, because <laughs> I was going to say, it looks nice. I was like, that yeah. doesn't look too bad. Is it garbage to actually use? Yeah, Appa apparently the space bar causes physical reactions. <laughs> Of disgust. Yeah. <laughs> Just... Uh, 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 uh. Fair enough. Uh, let's see. With precisely those bodily movements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Look at the EVGA mechanical keyboards. They're going for stupid cheap. Really? Oh, really? Yeah. To the search. EVGA mechanical EVGA keyboards. mechanical keyboards. Hit it. They... Do they? Wait, what's the model? What is the model? Hmm. E V G A keyboard. The Z twenty and the Z fifteen. Yeah. I didn't realise they were actually mechanical. Oh wow, they are actually mechanical. Uh fifty to sixty pounds, that's not bad. Yeah, I wouldn't yeah. call that overly impressive. Yeah, it, it's yeah, it's okay. There there was a there was a wave of affordable mechanical keyboards for like forty quid. So yeah, there's Oh a no, that's there. a membrane keyboard. Yeah. Wait, I thought the K55 was a mechanical for a second. I was yeah. just like, oh, okay. That red dragon looks all right. Yeah. For 40 quid. Yeah. Um so yeah. However, these these are blowing the budget. Um so it this is these are good purchases <laughs> for someone who's just bought their first gaming computer and they want to keep a cheap mechanical keyboard, but they kind of ruin my budget if I'm trying to sell them with the computer. So Yeah. Yeah, JP says where I live, I can get a thirty sixty and eleven four hundred for the same price. What? How much are you paying for that thirty sixty? Because if you're getting a thirty sixty for less than four hundred pounds, then buy their entire stock like now. If you're seeing thirty sixties in stock for less than four hundred quid, get your credit card out and buy every single one of them that they've got and resell them at double the price. Because thirty sixties. For less than 400 rip their arm off. Actually rip their arm off for that. Mm. Red Dragon keyboards are fine. Yee. Bye, bye, bye. Yeah, I'm serious. If you're seeing 3060s for that, for the kind of price that you would need to for that, that's crazy. Like, we looked, and if you want to buy a 3060 in the, in the UK right now, you better be looking at £500 plus. The whole PC is on promotion for 880 GBP. Yeah, okay, so it's bundled as part of the PC. That's this that is a very, very good price. Just for the graphics card Where alone. From? That's not sustainable. They you know, that's while stocks last. I'm amazed that's in stock. Yeah. Cause yeah, um that like literally like uh like Leon's uh Sugden just said. 480 for a 3060, that's the kind of price I'd expect. And that's half the budget of the entire PC there. It's crazy. Yeah. You got a 3060 for 400 from EVGA. Yeah, yeah. I bet you stood in line for a, a year for that. Literally. <laughs> oh, mm. I got told by EVGA that I had been removed from their queue. Oh. Sadness. <laughs> They were just like, sign up on the website and, you know, queue to buy a graphics card. Yeah. And then they just started removing people from the queue. Oh, to yeah. To clear the queue effectively. And I was just like, that is an invalid way of doing a queuing system. 
Yeah, well, a lot of people have managed to get by a GPU for an agreeable price on their system. They're doing what they can in a very, very bad situation. So there's always going to be some people who got screwed. Um, and there's not, you, you know, if you when you deal with the volume that they're going to be dealing in, there's only so much you can do. There's going to be some people that walk away unhappy, I think. So, yeah. Uh, at the very least, at least we can rest easy that, yes, you got removed from their system, but also you didn't really need one. <laughs> well, so, no, exactly. But it, yeah. was, it was just the case that their solution was remove people mm. from the queue, not to supply the GPUs to the people on the queue. Yeah. Like, okay. It actually took two months to get this 3060, but that was four months ago. Oh, wow. Two months. That's, yeah, you, you did well there, Mike Lad. You did very well. Probably because they kicked everyone off of the queue. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Caradog should have had that. And he, sh and he could have put it in the same computer that his 3090 is in. And no. used it for NVENC. <laughs> no. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. 3060 ROG was 550. Ow. Yeah. Yeah. I tell you, I didn't charge enough for the 3060 I sold this week, but this is the problem. You know, I've had this conversation with Caradog, but I have to ask myself, see, I've got these graphics cards in stock that are worth a lot more just to sell as graphics cards. But I have to ask myself the question, what is my objective here? If I sell all of my graphics cards, I'll make more money, but I won't have any graphics cards to put in my PCs, which means I can't sell PCs. However... So what am I trying to do? However, I think selling the cards that you have mm. for the markup that you can sell them for yeah. is worth it to buy a bunch of 1070s secondhand. Maybe. Because yeah. the value for money on that. Yeah. Yeah. Make money. You're a business. Yeah, this is true. I think, um, I mean, I'm kind of, I'm kind of in a, a fence sitting position at the moment where I'm very slowly selling off all of my graphics cards on eBay. And then I'm keeping my eye out. And when I see graphics cards at a good price, I will buy them on the spot because I do have some buying power. I have the ability that if I see graphics cards at a good price, I can say, I'll take I'll take as many as you will sell to me and max my credit card and know that I will eventually shift those cards at profit, Yeah, which most people can't do. Um, so, yeah. But, um, yeah, fair enough. Let's see. First time on New Egg Shuffling, you got a, a 3070 Ti. Hey, not bad. Yeah. Right. Okay. So um, that's that. Uh, so the AMD. So again, we could swap these. We could switch out for AMD, and we could we'd get have to drop all the way down to the bargainest of basement B550s. Yeah. And we'd end up with a 5600X, but a crap motherboard. Um. And that would be, if you really wanted AMD, that would be acceptable. However, I kind of wanted to build an Intel rig anyway, because I haven't built Intel for a while. I've been an AMD guy for quite for the past year minimum. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, that's that. Other than that, is there anything else that we need to cover with this at the moment? I just wonder if it's worth doing two of these. Um, and one of them being the non-F, so you can sell it without a graphics card. If that makes sense, having that possibility. Yeah. Should we respin this as an office machine? With that, I'd drop to just yeah. the cheapest motherboard. Yeah. Literally the cheapest motherboard that supports it. Drop the SSD. And go to the cheapest SSD that isn't an A data SU640. Yeah. 500 gig minimum, I think. Yeah. Otherwise, because if you go if you go less than five hundred, because again, bearing in mind, if my tagline is I don't sell cheap computers, I sell good computers. Mm. Obviously, we have to meet a minimum standard. Yeah. Um, Absolutely. So yeah. Also, drop this power supply. Yeah. Because you don't need yeah. that. Although you're only going to save a fiber. Okay. Let's but that's still... let's, let's save this build and let's respect to an office box. Um, which is less exciting than a gaming PC. However, office boxes are something that I also get asked for, and at the moment... Are we going to do that on a, a 12100? Sure, because that's the best value proposition at the moment, based on our discoveries, yeah. isn't it? Oh, you might... We Assuming, might need to well, again, discounting Pentiums and stuff like that. We might have to chuck a um, CPU cooler in, because... Don't they not come with CPU cooler? Do, do, the bit, 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 has the CPU cooler not been removed? 
Are you talking about the F or the non-F, or just in general? Either, both. Yeah. Don't know. Uh, I'm going to look it up now. Does anyone know the answer? Does the 12100 F or non-F come with a box cooler? 5600G, uh, too expensive. Well, 5600G is, is nice. Quid. But yes, 170 pounds. Well, we've got a 12 from AliExpress. Yeah, we've got a 12100 here, which is a compelling performance, uh, value performance, and it's 100 pounds. The 12100 is a, is a little monster, is what we're seeing. What the hell is the difference? Yeah. I'm not going to order the office box into stock. However, I do no. get people that come in and say, I want a computer for browsing the internet at home. I do not play games. This would be the spec that I would sell to them. Yes, there's a box cooler. Okay, yeah. I thought so. On the higher spec SKUs like the i5 and i7, I would definitely say probably not. But uh, yeah, 5600G all the way. Again, the i the i three is is a very good CPU. How much is that? That and is once again, remember the i three is a hundred pounds versus a hundred and seventy from AliExpress. So you know, but you get the motherboard cheaper. That's true. What was the um, the DS three H motherboard? That was what seventy pounds. Yeah, but the, yeah. the the price difference on the motherboard. Yeah. Isn't big enough to account for the extra CPU cost. Yeah. On there specifically. Yeah, and also like it's 170 from AliExpress, and I really don't want to buy my CPUs from AliExpress because I don't want to wait three three or four weeks for it to arrive and probably be a fake. Um. So yeah. While while Caradog looks up that stuff, I'm just going to quickly check what the 5600 uh, G actually costs. Amazon. 5600 G. Oh. Amazon, Amazon, please. There we go, fifty six hundred G. Yeah, I mean, on Amazon, the fifty six hundred G is two hundred and twenty pounds. Now, I'm sure we could find it slightly cheaper elsewhere, but let's pretend that we can find it slightly cheaper at two hundred. It's still almost double the price of the i three, and it ain't double the performance. The kids get a passable game of Fortnite on it too. I guess. However, I think if you're talking about a computer that can do light gaming, I think we're getting into a different category here. Isn't the 12100 overkill for an office box? I agree. However, again, the rule is good computer, not cheap computer. So we're looking for as cheap as possible, but actually classy. Also, okay, Pentium so isn't Pentium isn't classy. Pentium and Celeron is like, ugh. I wouldn't use an office box with a Pentium or Celeron in. Yeah, like if I you, don't care you, what the comment you, on that is, but a case of I wouldn't subject subject my staff to that. Yeah, if you can put an i if you can put an i three badge on a computer, you can immediately say this isn't trash. Basically, oh, wait, where's the size? That's what I wanted. We're oh, using Carado camera again. Yes, Four, never not. A T. Cheapest 480. AliExpress is doing the 5600G for 175. Yes, yeah. but I don't want to wait three weeks to, for it to arrive and the, run the risk of it being a fake 5600G. Also, I'm just going to double check something, but that might be 175 X VAT. Because no, Ali it, it's it's it ink VAT? it's ink VAT, but it's not oh, okay. it's not ink um, import. Ah, yeah, import then. So Which yeah, might that's the stop thing. It. Yeah. What Ali case do we want for this? Do we want a wedding test case? Wedding test case. Yeah. Uh, Antec VSK three hundred three thousand. I think that's probably a good option actually. The Antec VSK. Yeah. Thirty one pound from somewhere here. Yeah. Because so again, we're, we're we're trying to make it cheap. So yeah. Power supply. We need at least ten watts of power. <laughs> All right, fifty six hundred G on Amazon on AliExpress. It's not going to have a CPU cooler. It's going to be OEM from AliExpress. Do we think two hundred watts is going to be enough? Uh, yeah, probably. But well, safe then. Right. Uh, three hundred and seventy quid, excluding Windows. I'm signing into AliExpress just to find out how much the fifty six hundred G actually costs on AliExpress. Yeah. There we go. Uh, I'll set logging into things. 
Oh, bloody hell. See what I'm talking about? LastPass, it always wants my multi-factor, no matter how many times I say trust this computer. Stop making me multi-factor. Uh, right. There you go. Uh, 370. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so let's lob in a mouse and keyboard with that as well. Or, well, no, actually, no, let's not. We can we can just do that in our head. So yeah, 370. That is yeah. the non-F version. Yeah. An ASRock H610M. I would suggest that you probably want to find twenty-five pound of budget to go to the H660, just because it's got an extra two USB ports as well on it, and this yeah. has only got four. Yeah. Okay. So what was that price again? Three seventy. Sorry. Uh, three seventy. So you'd want so, actual purchase price of three ninety-ish. Yeah. So let's call that four hundred with a with a cheap mouse and keyboard in, included. Yeah. So four hundred. And let's say I want to make 50 quid on this, so 450. So, yeah, well, when people come in and they say, I want to buy an office box, how much do they cost? I usually say I'd expect to pay between 400 and 500, depending on whether it has a monitor. Yeah, it's so, also not, it's also, that's genuine. Oh, that's with 16 gigs of RAM. That's oh, yeah. the cheapest 16 gigs of RAM. Yeah, I'd put 8 gigs of RAM yeah, in an office but... box. Yeah, so we could, we could knock that down as well. You could do 450 with a monitor, keyboard, and mouse on that, yeah. I think. Yeah, so that's not terrible. Yeah. Windows license yeah, Windows license is like tenor or something like that. So yeah, sure. Yeah. And yeah, never not SSD, because again, it's not a cheap computer, it's a good computer. That that's the point. If you go to PC World, you get hard drives. If you buy from me, it's gonna cost you more, but you have an SSD. Yeah. That's that's the thing. That's the point. That's the objective here. Absolutely. And yeah, it's a Game Max GP400. It's also 160 watts, 170 watts of usage. So that's less than 50%. So even if it's a yeah. really crappy power supply, yeah, it's... you're going to get more than 200 watts out of it. Yeah, that's agreeable. So yeah. Right, I'm still trying to answer this question. Uh... Seven? I'm having to do about 10 multi-factor authentications just to find out how much this sodding CPU costs. Right. Are you sure? I'm sure there's a promo code you could probably grab from yeah. somewhere. No, with shipping, it is £173.56 yeah. on AliExpress. Yeah. Including everything. Yeah. I, th I thought there would be secret costs in there. Yeah. Yeah, all right. Add, add a potential 20% to that. Because import. Where am I going to get charged that, though? Because this is going to... customs. Because they'll stop it in customs. Will they? I, my no, but that's what I'm saying. Yeah. There is the risk oh, there's a of risk it getting, of getting stopped, stopped there, so that's what I'm yeah. saying. Okay, yeah. yeah. To take worst case scenario, yeah. it's 173 plus 20% yeah. because it gets stopped in customs and they charge you. Yeah, okay. However, the probability is it won't. So... So, uh, 35 quid for that. Um, Just do 174 times 1.2. I didn't think of that because I'm tired. Times 1.2. <laughs> right, so it could be £210 if it gets stopped in yeah. customs. Um, given that that's also going to take three weeks, if I were buying for myself... Well, shockingly, I'd... they say February 7th, which is actually... That's not bad, yeah. yeah. If I was buying for myself, I'd roll the dice on that. Yeah. If I'm building for a customer, I'm not rolling the dice on that because I, I, if I'm building for a customer, I will have had a conversation with the customer and said to them, "Yes, give me seven days and it will be ready for collection." Oh yeah, absolutely. So, um, so yeah, the AliExpress 5600G, it's technically viable. Um, I wouldn't be doing it from a retail perspective. But on the other hand, if I were building a computer up and then selling it, it's possible, yeah. Or if you wanted four or five of them to have yeah. across a wall and go, these are available today. That's Walk right. out the store with your brand new PC. Yeah. Uh, even the if £10 it... saving is obviously worth it because yeah. that's now 40 quid, which even, is... Even if it gets stopped in customs, you're going to, at worst... Be... Save. Yeah, although no box cooler. Um, whereas the, the, uh, the retail one will come with a cooler. So you're going to lose your money. You're going to lose your savings there again if it got stopped in custom. Although that much being said, a Hyper 212 or 412 is what 20 pounds. Yeah. So um, you end up with a better cooler, but the box cooler would be fine for this anyway. So 
I don't think it's worth it. I don't think... think... Or you could use something like, is it the LP9? Yeah. It's like £10? That's true, yeah. Which is fractionally better than the Intel stock blower, (sighs) as a comparison. So, it works, but it's a case that it's... it's, It becomes the effort. Yeah, I was about to say. We're jumping through a lot of hoops to maybe save a fiver. Mm. Which is worth it if you were doing yeah. and 10, your, And your warranty 15. is basically worthless because it was from AliExpress. I don't know. Ali. Well, AliExpress, the company, seemed to be very interested in fixing problems. Okay, so, so they, they would potentially refund you. So yeah. possibly yeah. AliExpress themselves might yeah. refund you. It's certainly going to be more hassle compared to something like uh, Amazon where you just simply say, it was broken, and they refund you. Yeah. So, yeah. Exactly. So, but yeah. It's when you're doing a volume of them. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fair enough. Um, yeah, all right. Yeah, I think that's interesting. Oh, yeah. So the AliExpress one, yeah, it's doable. I don't think it's worth it myself, but yeah. it is doable. It exists. It's not a trick. Mm. So, yeah, initially, yeah, like... Uh, it, it's easy to look at that and be like, oh, buying your CPU from AliExpress, that's a terrible idea. Well, yeah, no, it can work. However, I don't think it's worth the hassle myself. I'd buy it from Amazon if yeah. it were me. But if you don't mind jumping through, like if you're the kind of person that is like, no, I will absolutely be, buy my pass from 10 different shops because it will save me £10 and you don't mind filling out all the paperwork and the forms, which is my personal hell. I despise doing that. You know, if you don't mind that, it's worth it. Yeah. I do mind it. So, yeah. But yeah, it was an interesting interesting thought experiment, though. Mm. Yeah. I'm interested in the AliExpress, um, like, 4750 Pro and, like... 4750 Pro? Yeah. The, the um, 4000 series APUs. Only because apparently they've got bonkers memory controllers on them. Ah. So that's fun. Interesting. From that point of view. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Uh, Anthony Will Anthony Wilson says, um, uh, customers pass away wiping needs access to laptop. Recommendations for password removal on a Windows 10 account. Um, if you Google search for it, there is a method for Windows 10. Uh, well, there's two ways that you can do this. Pull the hard drive out the laptop and plug it into another computer. You win. Um, or B, if you... Desp- um, well, yeah, that's the easiest way. For the purposes of password recovery, um, another method of doing this is um, there is a method where you rename the... Um, you rename... You boot into recovery mode and you rename the ease of access app and copy in the command line.exe app to there. And then when you start the computer up, you click on ease of access and it starts an elevated command prompt. And from there, you can use the command prompt to add in and to unlock the administrator account. And bam, you now have administrator access to the computer. Uh, That's the other method of getting in. For the purposes of data recovery, just pull the hard drive out and plug it into another computer. Uh, If uh, if it is encrypted with BitLocker, you're screwed. Uh, Start looking at Microsoft account recovery. Yeah, I mean, that would be my point. Yeah. Recovering the user account by going yeah. through the password reset process. They don't need data, just save passwords and logins. Work on recovering the email password. So if, let's say it's a Google account. Go to the Google, go to google.com, try and log in, say I forgot my password, and work on recovering the email account because from there you can potentially reset all the passwords for the other accounts. Just recovering saved passwords and logins, that's going to be hard work. I yeah, you're going to have a bad time trying to do that. I don't think it's reasonable to recover saved passwords and logins. Although I suppose if they're saved in if they're saved yeah, in Chrome, if I was about to say if they're saved in Chrome or Firefox, I suppose you could copy the fire the, the Chrome and Firefox profile. Well, not even well, not even that. Just go um, into passwords. On here, yeah. do you have saved passwords on this laptop? There are probably a couple there. Don't open it on this one because I'm not sure what's going to come into, up. Um, what the hell is it? Um, oh, if you go into settings and then yeah. passwords in there, you can then view the password if you know the Windows account. 
password? Yeah. So How... you can view them all. Yeah, but that requires having the Windows account password already, which we don't Absolutely, have. but obviously yeah. if you've done the Microsoft recovery, you can sign in with that. Or yeah. if you can um, reset the password using yeah. Re- password reset boot live USB. Yeah. I forgot what the hell it's called. Hexen? Pa- Hiren? Sirens? Yeah, Hiren's boot CD. Yeah, that's Stuff one like way that. of doing it. Yeah. Uh, recover the email password and then use that to reset everything else. That's your best option. That or that that oh. is uh, that is the most viable option in my opinion. So yeah, uh, log in as admin and change user password. That doesn't ha- that doesn't work if they're logged in with a Microsoft account. Um, however, it's worth a try because if they're not signed in with a Microsoft account, that would work. Yes. However, if they're signing in with a Microsoft account, that won't work. Um, so yeah, uh, cool. That's something I didn't know that was possible. What are you looking at? Sorting the prices by merchant. So if you said, I want oh, yeah. all of these from AWD, what's the cost? £2 that's more cool. here, £3.50 more there, £5 more there, etc. That's, that's a really neat feature. Yeah, yeah. that's very cool. <laughs> Groovy. So, yeah. All right. Um, so we've done our office box. We've done our gaming PC. Um, and, uh, yeah, is there anything else we want to cover? Because if not, I think we've kind of we've kind of done everything, haven't we? think so yeah yeah and i think we've resoundedly proven that if you're building it this sort of price it yeah if you're built 600 x isn't particularly viable now yeah pretty much if you if your if your budget is if your budget is 800 or lower intel is a better but is, is a better option if your budget is 800 plus um if your budget is 800 plus if you're building for yourself then 800 plus. If you're building for a client where you need to put profit in, then you need to be up at 900 or a grand before AMD actually starts making sense. Um, so yeah, and don't get me wrong, I, I love the 5600X. However, it's twice the price of the i3. Yeah. You can't you can't argue with that. Yeah, 100 pounds for that i3 is crazy. Mm. That's crazy. That is a stonking good little CPU. So yeah. All right. So, okay, well, I think we're done then. In that case, we've kind of done what we set out to achieve. Um, we've covered both computers. So what we're going to do, I'm, uh, I'm offline. We're going to look at some motherboards, but I'm going to end up buying all of this. Um, and if it comes in next week, we'll build it up, I guess, won't we? Yeah, that seems like a good idea. Yeah, if we, if we have it in time for next week, we'll build it up. Um, uh, other than that... Uh, past that, other than that, next week another thing that we might look at. Uh, next week we might get onto the retro computing stream that I've been threatening to do for months um, because I've got some retro computing parts. We're talking like Pentium One stuff, uh, and also today an old an old um, two thousand and two era computer came in for data recovery, and I get to keep the PC. And it looks amazing. I'm talking Lian Li. I'm talking Chief Tech. I'm talking uh, Enomax. I'm talking uh, old stuff. Blowholes. Fan controllers. It, Twiddly knobs. Uh, th- temperature monitors on the front of it. Buttons. Floppy drives. Uh, it's such an... Like, uh, let's Less get, floppy drives. Let's do a, I'm going to do a sneak preview. I'm going to grab it. Here it comes. Very well. It's also very tall. Full height. Look at this. It's not quite in focus. There we go. Look at this. There we go. Now it'll probably be in focus. <laughs> Caradog head for size comparison. <laughs> Caradog head for scale. <laughs> it's got IDE drives. It's got ribbon cables. It's got rounded ribbon cables. I want to look through this and like I, I want to restore this to its former glory. There's a lot of questionable stuff in there. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> look at look at the fan in the top at the top blowhole. Look yes. at that boy. Yeah. Yes. Like how how mega do you think that fan is? So yeah. Oh god, there's stuff stuffed in there as well. Yeah. There's a there's oh a lot to unpack god. here, and I'm like, this is a stream. This PC, just making sense of all the stuff that's in here. Yeah, I know, right? So I want to look through this thing. I want to take it apart and I want to try and put it back together again as originally intended kind of thing. Not because it's good, 
I mean, obviously, you know, but there's just so much to unpack here that will make us go, wow. So, yeah. Oh, good Lord. That is, that is, um, tubular. <laughs> yes. Radical, dude. Far out. Window side panel when they were made out of, you know, borosilicate glass or something. <laughs> it's probably acrylic, like actually acrylic, which means it's not terrible. Yeah, as opposed to a plastic bag. Yeah, it's not as nice as a Cooler Master ACTS. I was a Cooler Master fanboy. Lianli were the enemy. However, it it's still a Lianli, which means it's going to be actually pretty good. Yeah. So, yeah. Anyway. Um, that's it. That's the end of the stream, I think. Very well. I've enjoyed this conversation in English. Thanks for coming, everyone. Um, antique cat video recovery. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and here are the cat memes from 1999. Oh, man. Remember lol cats? No. Really? Yes. Yes. Okay. You were just... It was more in a sense of, no, we're not doing that. <laughs> but yeah, okay. Anyway, thank you for joining us, everyone. Thank you very much for coming here. Thank you for the super chats that we had earlier on as well. Much appreciated. Uh, we'll be back next week, uh, same time, same place. You had an ACT 201. Christopher Butt, I too had an ACTS 201. I had the 201B to be precise. Massive, uh, massive fan of that case. Oh, I want to go and get... No, no. Uh, if we are ending the stream. Yes. If Good. you're interested in the 2000, the early noughties era of, of custom PCs, be here next week. I'll get out the Cooler Master to show you my my case from that era as well. Lots of cool stuff. Um, anyway, that's all. Thank you for tuning in, everyone. We'll see you next week. Um, yeah, that's it. Goodbye, everyone. Um, links in the description for support, Discord, main chat, y yada, yada, yada. Absolutely. Bye. See you next time. Bye. Goodbye. Tara. And stream. Farewell. And stream. Avida Zane.